All right, we're back. We're live. I don't think I messed up the chat this time. And uh, hopefully uh, we learn from this and I'm not perfect and I'm not a robot. And uh, there we go. So not, not a professional. So one off. We moved Thursday this week. Uh, it's chat day or tax day almost. And then it got extended. So we're here to stimulate the economy and give away some stuff, some tackle, some gift cards on the what was almost tax day. So hopefully everybody makes it back in because we actually had like 60 people right off the bat. So yeah, uh, hopefully everybody's back and uh, no more snafus. It looks like a lot of people are coming in. Hopefully they all make it back. So everybody hit like. That helps the uh, the algorithm on these live streams. So hit like as soon as you come in the door. Pump up the likes. It gets uh, the video pumped up for uh, Rich's subscribers. Yeah. Is this the new one? Do, 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 do. What's up, everybody? We are trading you in for a bot. You're going to get traded in for a bot. <laughs> Look, we're chatting. It's working. Is this a simulation? All right. Somebody, SmackDown Outdoors is getting esoteric on us. Is this, is life a simulation? We, we should probably go talks. quicker because this is not, have to go to bed in like 19 minutes. So. <laughs> this is not the Joe Rogan podcast. We're not going to talk about... Um, Simulation theory. Got to finish your Arsenal video, Brian. It's not that long. And I posted it months ago, so. <laughs> I think talking about the one today, the rod. <clears throat> oh! Not... Yes. That that one's going to take a while. That's like a half hour. Awesome, Dustin. Uh, what's up, Jonathan? All right, people are Hi to everybody in. again. Everybody's rolling right. back in. Sweet. We're good. Oh man, we got uh, we got a hook setter in here. We're good. I think the sound's probably good. Yeah, things are looking nice. This is both, Thomas. It is the real and alternative world at the same time. Whoa, that's heavy. Yeah, drain the lake. New fancy fishing game. I'm excited about that. I did a little segment on that in my latest video. So that's uh, where you pick. Eight What's anglers for each week. There's no buckets. You just take those buckets and whoosh, get rid of them. But once you use an angler in an event, you can't use them again the rest of the season. So it's kind of a elimination type thing. Oh, it's like a survivor in football. Yeah, survivor eliminator. So yeah, yeah. So if you pick Keith Combs for Lake Fork, you can't use him at Gunnersville. So nice. Everybody, share the link. Let's get over 100 people in here tonight. We got 75. We're close. Yeah, this is uh, good. Awesome. Send it to your buddies. Send it to your yeah. mom. Send it to your your boss. Beating Halibass has not been that tough this year. I've been not on my A game. So I, I, the the fantasy fishing is cool. Um, I love that there's so many different leagues, and you can just set your lineup, and it goes across all the leagues and everything. But my problem is, I always get super into it the first like two, three tournaments, and by the middle of the season, I forget all about it, and then I don't set a lineup or two, and then I'm like, oh, I'm way behind now. So what's yeah. So what you do is you subscribe <laughs> to my channel, hit the bell notification button, and then when my video comes out, you go, oh, I, I need to set my lineup. I also feel like I don't, I don't know who. 79 percent of the Bassmaster field is these uh, since the mer like since everyone left it's i don't know better, though. oh like, yeah but i'm just saying i don't like i look yeah. at a bunch of names in the groups and i'm like i know one guy out of like 25 and i'm like mm. that's because you're a gear nerd and not a fan of the sport uh yeah I've, I've only tried it on my desktop i heard a couple of the people said they had issues <clears throat> i've done it on chrome and it auto saves for me thomas um i did the exact same that's actually why i quit fantasy football is because uh i i got so burnt out on it mid by the middle of the season that I just never put much effort into it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we, 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 we found it five minutes in, we reset. So I think we're good. And uh, yeah. people are pouring in. We're almost at a hundred. That's so awesome already. Let's get the raffle thing out of the way. So people can start through throwing entries in. Do you want to go over that? All right. So let's just like, before we open, right. What we have here is we each got a big box from Omnia fishing. So we're giving both size. of these away plus some gift cards and probably some other stuff that might have gotten thrown in. And we'll talk more about that. But that's high level what's going on here. Uh, we'll tell you why we have these boxes, how we got these boxes, all that stuff. But how you enter, I will put it up in the ticker down below. So we got an email down there called omniagiveaway at gmail.com. 
you need to send us an email before 930. So you have about 45 minutes with your <laughs> username, like your screen name and your real name. And then if you have a preference on which box, let us know which one is your favorite, just in case whoever gets picked first. But uh, that's it. Just send us an email. And then uh, if you get picked, we'll follow up. We'll get your address and we'll send you some cool stuff. So, yeah. So we're keeping this super simple. You send one email in, you get one entry. It's like a raffle. Right. So we're going to let everybody get in one entry until 930. Then we're going to cut it off. And anyone who emails after that, you're not entered. And then we're going to pick winners live on the on the show tonight. So you're going to know, right? <laughs> we'll talk <laughs> about that, Sean. Yeah. So, so we're going to give both of these boxes away to people in the crowd tonight, but you have to shoot in an email. So start emailing now one email and I'm going to search. And if we pick the winner and I see that you entered more than once, we're picking a new winner. So one entry per email. Do you want to have your wife email? Go ahead. I don't care. But one email is one entry. If you bought us, I'm going to, I'm going to find it. So if you have like 17 burner Gmail accounts, more power to you. Now's the time to use them. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, what we're doing tonight is um, we're going to do a little mystery. We're going to kind of, cause everything, on, everybody on YouTube loves mystery unboxing, right? Like what did I order? What's the mystery, you know, mystery boxes are big right now. So what we're doing is a little twist on the mystery box scenario. So I don't know, maybe Rich wants to break it down. Yeah. So I was just, for, I, mean, I, I can talk if you want. The, I want to yeah. pin the email to okay, the you go, uh, you, Facebook. Yeah, you, like, all right. So you talk. I'll, I'll talk. So what we did is Rich and I both have codes from Omnia. We're both like Omnia affiliates through our social media. And when we're affiliates, we get to build up some credit. So as we, as you guys out there and gals use our codes, we get credits built up. And what we decided to do is use some of our credit and we set a, a, a financial limit. So Rich and I could each take 50 bucks of our own credit, go shop on Omnia, buy tackle, I shipped my order to Rich's house. Rich shipped his order to my house. Neither of us know what's in each other's box. And we're going to open them live and decide what I want to see what Rich's order is. And he gets to see what my order is. And then both boxes, soup to nuts, everything in the box is getting sent out from us to one of you viewers. Well, two of you viewers tonight. So stay tuned. We're going to open the boxes and then shoot your emails in. Start flooding my email box right now. And uh, then we're going to give them away. Yeah. So screen name only like, so Casey, your name is your name, but some people have like <clears throat> punch just, fishing. So like yeah. if your name on YouTube or Facebook is different than your real name, just include that. So we can kind of see who you just, are. If, just give us if, some rough contact information. If you're Casey Bolin or Nate Summers or Scott L or Leo, then you don't need to put that in there. You can just put your name. Right. If you want to throw your address in, that's fine. They'll save us getting it from you. But if you don't want to, that's cool too. It's up to you, but just get your emails coming in right now. Yeah. And so the reason we're doing that is I know, so we're also drawing the giveaway for last week's Super K Jigs tonight. Ooh, exciting. So if you haven't left a comment on last week's stream, you got a little bit of time left, but that's going to happen pretty soon. Um, so, and so the reason we're doing the email is this is a way we can do it live. We'll do a random number generator and um, we'll be able to pick it on stream and we'll get the winner tonight. There's no way within StreamYard that I have found that I can do a random live comment we want to give it away tonight so that's why we're doing this and i know there's a lot of people that are doing super chats to give away stuff which is like a monetary raffle which more power to the people that want to do that hustle and make some money on their streams which i'm not i'm, I'm not opposed to super chats but i know we got middle school kids we got high school kids i don't want to feel like kids that are watching this stream and here to learn how to suck less at bass fishing are like pushed out because they can't put a super chat in. So uh, that's why we're doing it this way. Um, that's the plan. And that's why we're asking for your email is so you don't have to, you know, the only other way we can do it is really do super chats and keep track of those. And I don't want to do, I want to make it like who can put in the most super chats to win this. Um, What's a super, super chat? chat? Super chat is only on YouTube and it's a way where you can like don't highlight your comment with like a dollar or $5 donation. Uh, as YouTube channel, as YouTube live streams got more and more popular over COVID, YouTube decided to have a way that people could kind of tip the YouTube streamer so they can throw a couple bucks at you and then their comment goes to the top and gets shiny and stuff. So that's what a super chat is. It's basically tip and rich. Oh, actually, I should go this way. Tip and rich. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't think there's a way that I can uh, let you copy it. I guess we could. Oh, wait, here. Let me. I can try to do. No, nope, that's the wrong one. Yeah. So, so you just you got have to write it down. It's scrolling on the bottom of the screen, Simon. 
if you want in, I think you can figure it out. <laughs> we got we got emails coming in. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. I've seen emails. Exactly. Well. That's right, RF. So you put RF, your real name, email it in, you're in. <clears throat> so if you didn't notice, we got 109 people on the stream. Yeah. We're uh, we're creeping on uh some records. I think my record is like 135 live. Oh, so we can do better than that. Let's go. Yeah. Hit like everybody. Get this pumped up. Let's hit let's let's crack some records tonight. I do in a comment, Simon. So if you can maybe look at my pin comment, that might allow you to copy it. Or the one I just put in the chat, you can see if you can copy that. If you can't do that, then there's no way for me to let you copy it. So yeah, so, yeah you got about 40-ish minutes to get your emails in, and that's why we're doing it. Yeah, um, we're 930 Central. Yes, 930 Central. Uh before we get too far. I want to make sure we thank Arsenal Fishing for supporting the stream and being a partner of the channel. Uh, we both love Arsenal Fishing. Uh, I, their clothing is dope. Yeah, I mean, like I have, they have a bunch of long sleeve sun hoodies, and that's like my on the water apparel. That's what I wear all the time for sun protection. What I like is Dan at Arsenal. He's got a really good eye for design. He he makes stuff that looks cool. Like not not all the companies make stuff that looks cool. Rappola doesn't make anything that looks cool, <laughs> like visually. So it's nice to see a company that actually tries to make something that's appealing, like visually. Yeah, one entry per email. Yeah, one. You, if you send in an email, you are entered. That's all you got to do. Yes. So if you want to send, if you can get your wife to send or your girlfriend or your favorite child to send an email, one email, one entry per email address. Yeah, it has to be a an actual email that we can respond back to you and um, get your information to, to ship. And we're shipping these on our dime too. You don't yeah. have to do anything. You just, this stuff's just coming to you in the mail. That's what we'll be using to open the box, Sean, is my braid scissors from Arsenal. I'm using a fancy, well, not a fancy knife, but. <laughs> yeah. For those that want to see what's in the box, you can totally wait. Um, yeah. We're going to open them in a little bit here. Yeah. So, so I saw some questions coming through. Uh, yeah, if you got any questions, this is kind of just an open session tonight. Two, two YouTubers just want to hang out and, uh, talk with everybody. Um, and this, if you I know like I'm a, this idea, it was mine. If you don't, it was Brian's. So there you go. I know I'm a step down from your usual guest. You usually have guys who like win <laughs> giant trophies on bass tours. And now you got some nobody YouTuber who does videos so, out of his basement. So speaking of that, since we just brought that up. So next week, the guys from Bass Brawl, the guys from up from like Ottertail County, ah, uh, nice. Lyle and Casey are coming nice. on. So if you guys are into like uh, offshore electronics, specifically Humminbird, it's going to get geeky on that kind of stuff next week. So yeah, those awesome. guys, I, I don't, I'm not a Humminbird person. I don't have any Humminbird stuff, but I still like watching their videos because I like seeing how good they are at their Humminbird mm -hmm. stuff. Like Casey can read a Mega 360 like perfectly it's like amazing yeah from otter tail for sure uh and then in a couple more weeks i've got a couple gaps i gotta fill but may 12th brock mosley elite series what Pro. yeah that's a big get look at you yeah so back-to-back -back second place finishes the guy is prop i wouldn't doubt if he wins one before he comes on the show like brian new did and that'll be an awesome get he's the one with the commercial where he's like baseball did it no that's <laughs> fletcher, fletcher shy rocker oh Shirock. dang <laughs> I got him. I got this is why he doesn't know fantasy fishing people because he doesn't even know who it is. No, no. no. Brock Mosley is probably one of the best up and coming people that nobody's oh, really he, talking about. Oh yeah, Brock's on the elite, and the yeah. Abu guy is on BPT. See, I know that. Next week, Logan, or next week, Logan, they'll be able to tell you how to set up your helix better than I can. Yes. Tell us more about it. Okay, Brian. Tell wait. Brian has nine fishing poles instead of Brussels. Yeah, my. They deserve their own bar stool. I actually do have bar stools, but they're on the other side of the bar. I just don't. Why do you need more than like two bar stools? I have zero bar stools. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit. So, uh, so we both spent a little more than fifty dollars because we're tackle oh, yeah. junkies, and that's what happens uh, with of our own funds. And well, uh, on my and order, then, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So then, so we threw in a lecture of our own. And then Omnia kind of got word to what we were doing. And then they threw in some extra stuff in our boxes that we'll see, I think, plus some gift cards. So they each come with a $25 gift card. Now, my dog ate half of mine this morning. Does that mean it's only worth 
half. But the they're gonna they're gonna cover it. So you'll get a real one. You'll get a digital code with mine and not half a <laughs> gift card that you can't redeem. Oh, that's funny. What? Um, so that's uh, Craig. Not yet, but I'm about to order it. But I think it's back ordered. So pr- I'm, I'm planning to get one, but I think it's going to be a while before I get it. Um, <clears throat> that's great. So oh, yeah, and if you yeah. want, like, this is actually let me. <laughs> I'll show you what my dog looked like after he ate it in the uh, the guilt. Yeah, that was it. a good post. That was a good post. If you guys don't follow Rich on Instagram, he he ousted his dog after he ate the uh, Omnia gift card. Why was it on the floor? How did it get in? How did it get in his range? Because I was making the post before on Instagram, right, and taking okay. pictures for the thumbnail and all that stuff. I didn't put everything away, so it was sitting in the front like window where I had good lighting to take the picture, and <laughs> then. He got to it this morning when I was in the shower when the rest of the family is supposed to be watching him. <laughs> oh, that's great. That was really funny. Um, yeah, okay, so he picked up a Rebellion rod. Uh, the Rebellion rods are pretty cool. Um, I like the casting more than the spinning rods. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Does he look guilty? What do you think? Does yes. he feel? Do you think he felt shame? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That is hilarious. Ooh, we got 120 people. Nice. Keep hitting like people. He's actually like part uh, German Shepherd, part Terrier, part other things. He's kind of a and he's a mess. Yeah, someone said better the gift certificate than a treble hook. That's true. 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 All right. All right. So let's uh who, who thinks, let me know in chat, are we ready to start opening the, I think we have now, we're close to a record. Who's ready for us to start opening things? Let me know in the chat. Or if you want to just keep talking or should we like actually um, open some stuff? I think we could, I think we could open stuff. I can't talk. We can open some stuff and talk and cheers to everyone out there tonight. I know we're doing kind of a late night show, which I actually like late night show because everyone's probably having a beer and getting their kids to bed. So shout out to all the people that are chilling out and having a drink. If you're If you're having a drink, tell us what you're, tying on tonight jacob wants to know what your nerd posters are behind you my nerd posters oh geez these are uh, this whole thing is like um a vegas theme i got two godfather posters and then a big frame picture of downtown vegas from like the 1950s i'm a i'm a big fan of the godfather one and two movies so i don't know anything specifically about edrons but i'm kind of wondering why there was oh lumis and why there's Temple Fork that. Outfitters, which was supposed to be by G. Gary Loomis, and now why there's Ed Rods by. So I, I don't know why he needs a new rod company every five years, but I, I have no opinion on the rods. I haven't held them, but that just. Ed Rods. Think. The pe- people who get them don't really love them, and they take a long time to get. They make to order. So if you order one, it could be like weeks, months before you actually get it. And then the people have ordered them, they feel a little underwhelmed when they actually show up. So I don't know. I, I haven't heard a lot of good things, but I'm never going to order one. So they're record, always they're perpetually on sale all the time. Record live on YouTube is 135. Ooh, we're close. We're getting close. Yeah. So share the link, blast it out to people, hit like. The more you guys hit like, the more people will come in. That's how YouTube's algorithm. Bringing up reels. Ooh, High Life, man. I respect that. I do, I do love some champagne. I do not mind Miller High Life. People knock that beer, but on a, a nice cold High Life in the summer, like out in the sun, is it's not. It's been a while for me since I've had one. It makes me want to get some for the next time I grill out. Yeah. Oh, grilling. That's a perfect grilling beer. 100%. Absolutely. Shorter jig skipping rods. I like Ooh. a seven foot. I use a seven one. Jigs. I like a 705. Seven foot mag heavy. But I'm tall. I'm 6'2", so 7'1", to me, is not that long. I, it kind of depends on your height. A short rod to a tall person is different than a short rod to a short person. I think there's some truth to that, but I think that is a little overblown as well. Yeah, because you're up on a boat. You're off the ground anyways. Okay, this guy has clearly been drinking. I think Brian is the best guest you've had to date. Yes, and that's my tournament partner, Josh. <laughs> so he's he's my team partner, so thank you, Josh. <laughs> Right. Um, so are you uh let's gary sells his company waits for the non-compete to run and starts over hey why not man he's obviously a good a uh, good businessman 
Oh yeah, we are running the classic one more, <laughs> one more season, and I think one we'll more? probably change one more. We're see, Rich and I have a kinship. We're both in the no bass boat payment mafia. <laughs> we both have older boats that we don't have a loan on, which something to be said for that. So, Rich, we have 124 entries into the raffle. Wow, almost. <laughs> so there's definitely more people in. <laughs> The raffle then no. watching somehow. To be fair, if you enter the raffle from you and your wife, it's fine. We're not I'm not gonna split yeah. hairs about the thing. So yeah. But if you keep sending multiple emails from the same email, you're gonna get DQ'd. I'm seeing some women's names in the emails and I or in the emails. I doubt there's too many women on the live stream, so should, we should make them watch like on a separate device. Oh yeah, you have to but, throw make pull it open on your wife's phone and make her watch. Well, we're supposedly closing this in a half an hour, so we might want to just yeah, let's start jump in. in the boxes. Okay, but should uh, there's some people that join the stream that don't know what we're talking about. Um, right. Someone just said, how do you enter? Do you want to do it? Yeah, so look at the bottom. Email your name to this email. It's a pinned comment on both Facebook and YouTube with the email. It's omniagiveaway at gmail.com. <clears throat> and then we'll draw yeah. in about a half an hour. <clears throat> One email is one entry. All you gotta do is email, and you are in the lotto. So actually, we wanted to guess. Okay. Try to guess a couple baits. I would, if you guys have guesses based on any of you people who know Rich and you know me, we're, throw out some of your ideas and what you guys think are in some of these boxes. I want to see some in the comments, but yeah, I think you should guess a couple. Let's say two things. Two things. You, you think of two things that are in that box that I would have bought, and I'm gonna think of two things that I think you put in here just based on watching your videos and your Instagrams. So I'll go first. Do you want me to, while you think about it or you think you're ready? Okay, to go? you can go ahead. Uh, yeah. I'm going to guess there's some kind of, um, I'm guessing there's some kind of frog in here because you're a frog aficionado. You throw a frog a lot. That's kind of your, your bread and butter in tournaments. So I'm guessing, I don't know if Omnia carries the frogs that you feel are worthy, but I'm guessing there's a frog in here of some sort. And I'm also going to guess because you have an affinity for the the menace. I'm guessing there's a menace in here. A Strike King Rage Menace Grub. So those are my two guesses. A frog and a menace are in yeah. here. Here's those, two. those two baits scream rich to me. I think I should be easy. Uh X Zone Muscle Back Craw. <laughs> Okay. And then I was going to go with uh, Mega Bass S Crank. Although that might be a little more for the budget for this box, but that's one you definitely like. This is a very good bait. And those are maybe good what's the new one that's not a Mega Bass that you like? It's a Jackal MC60. Oh, MC MC Omnia doesn't carry them. So oh. we're, we're limited to what Omnia had in stock, uh, by the way. Come on, Jacob. All right. So there, there's a couple guesses. Okay. So right. let's see. What are some so, of the guesses uh, in chat? We got. Mega Bass, Mega Bass, Mega Bass. <laughs> now you remember, <laughs> if we bought a bunch of Mega Bass, the box would be much smaller. Yeah, these are big boxes, so it can't just be. <laughs> it can't be like one Vision One Ten. <laughs> no, this one oh, is pretty big. This is their new camel snapback, and I think it makes a pretty fine visor. I have that same hat, but with the top. I so to be fair, I ordered two because I was going to keep the top on one, and they only sent me one because somebody over there is hard at looking at numbers. I can't read numbers. Someone uh, said so a jack. You're the guest. Why okay. don't you tell us what you're going to open it with, and then uh... I'm opening it with a Wee Knives banter. It's a really awesome knife. Uh, so, oh, there's a lot of good. Andrew Olson says that there's Omnia swag in it. That's entirely likely. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pop open my box here from Mr. Lingren, and I'm going to just reach in and find out what's in there. I'm not even going to look. Which is always the fun part. Put it on the ground here. Keep throwing guesses out. Someone said OG Slims. Someone said swim jigs. Why didn't I think of swim jigs? You're a swim I've jig. I've seen guy. some correct guesses. Okay. Um, right on top of the box. You guys are going to love this. This is dope. They threw in a freaking hoodie. Whoa. What? Hmm. Omnia. Look. Oh, you even get the jerk bait. Look at that. Nice. That is. I kind of wish like it would open up the title already. <laughs> like we're undervalued. There's definitely more than 150 given away tonight. Size large Omnia fishing jerkbait hoodie right off the rip. Now it's all downhill from here. 
All right, so that's cool. You guys are getting a large, and they run big. So if you wear an extra large, this will probably still fit you. They're roomy. They're the Russell hoodies that are kind of, you know, they got some, they got some room. And so for you guys that don't win, both Brian and I have Omnia codes in the descriptions <laughs> of our videos. You can go buy one. one you want to use. Okay. Go ahead. And if you, uh, so if you, if you see stuff you don't, if you don't win and you see something you want, feel free to use the codes. Now, since you want to look really cool, they also threw something else in the box. Boom. The matching hat. So you're going to be all omnia out. Look at that. So I assume there'll be a hat in mine. If the winner that wins mine wants a visor, <laughs> I will make you a visor. Yeah, he'll, it'll be customized. And you got to sign the, the brim underneath. I will take my Arsenal Braid Sisters, <laughs> and I'll, I'll probably even do like a little social post when I make it, just a custom All right. and a shout out. I don't I don't think you should let people decide on that. I think you should just do it. Okay, first bait. I'm not looking. I feel I feel a hard bait. I feel Terminal Tackle? Terminator. I was right. Frog. This is the Walking Frog Junior. Oh, you even picked the Junior, which is actually my favorite. Oh, I like the Junior. That was an accident that. if I picked the Junior. It is. <laughs> really? You picked a good color, though, the black and red. All right. So bait number one is a Terminator. The Junior's good. I like the Junior. Go yes, shout out to Jay Fishes. Appreciate the support, bud. Uh, and you got uh, you make some content yourself, so that's that's awesome. If you like some uh, Minnesota content, you can check out Jay Fish's channel as well. All right, so we're off I to a good start. I see some requests for the visors. <laughs> so this might be a thing. Oh, wow. You got a $20 dono? Yeah. Wow. Shout out to Jay Fisher. That's that's nice. That's awesome, man. Thank you. All right. So, All I, right. I gotta, so yeah. So why? So I do love frog. And I will say the Terminator frog is one of the frogs I like. I think it's, it's super underrated. Uh, the hookups are good. It's pretty durable. They were really, well. really hard to get last year. They were out of stock almost everywhere. The juniors were really uh, hard to if, find. If you're a frog fisherman, do you, and if you're just like always stuck on the spros, like you're like spro, 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 mm -hmm. check out the Terminators. They're legit. <clears throat> I like the juniors for a couple reasons. They For some reason, these juniors, I, they skip good too. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, most frogs skip good, but the juniors skip good. The juniors are good for um, walking. They walk really nice. I just, I like the juniors. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the juniors is what fighter throws. He throws these more than the big ones. I like right. I like the regular ones. It's a little bigger, but <clears throat> their frogs are a little bigger than others. So their junior is probably yes. as big as like a Spro they're, 60. Yeah, their juniors are way bigger than like a Kyra frog or whatever. Okay, yeah. I'm going to reach back in. So well, number one. Maybe I should open my box. Okay, started. go ahead. We'll go bait for bait. All right, so I'm going to open mine with my Arsenal braid scissors. I, I bought two. I got one in the studio for tackle hacks and opening boxes, and they have another one in the boat. Um, let's see. Dustin says, I think the hooks are far too, are too far forward on the Terminator. Booyahs are better. You know, know. Booyahs are good. I'm not going to knock Booyah frogs. People love those things. Does Omnia carry scum frog? I don't think they do. I don't think they have too much of that. What's the, they carry net bait, but I don't know if they have the scum frog. Uh, line. I don't know. Go uh, search. A slightly different hoodie. Oh, you got the black a variant. One. You got the, bl the black one. This one is a black hoodie. Uh, large as well. Nice. I like that. I don't think I've even seen this one. It looks pretty slick. That's red. So, so I got the go. jerkbait one. You got the he's, you he's got the and There's a hat. It looks like a different hat. Ooh, look at this. Oh, the that's a new one. Screen. They just got those. Those are those are the brand the, new. Those are the 2021 collection. So this is some brand new stuff. Richardson 115. That's a good hat. Low Pro Trucker. Perfect. Easily customizable if you win and you want it. It's even got the logo down low, so when you cut it, it won't. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the... if you, I don't have my Omni Advisor here, but like, this is the Omni of the gray one with this style is the one I make into my visor for Omni. So. I like Wyatt's comment. You two look like kids opening presents on Christmas morning. Isn't that every fisherman when they get an order in? That's all of us, right? That's a that's a one universal thing. It doesn't matter if you're a crappie fisherman, a musky fisherman, a catfish fisherman, a bass fisherman, saltwater. We all. Get excited when we get a tackle box in yeah. the mail. So we hit 140, so we got a new record. Thank you, everybody. Woo! I'll drink to that. Cheers. Thanks, crowd. We could cut it right now, but if the winner does, like, let's say if the winner is follically challenged, like Brian, he may not want the top of his hat cut off. No, that's a that's going to be a medical problem. I don't want the melatonin or the, the right. melanoma. We're reaching in. Okay, wait. 
Okay, you'd pull out your first bait. How many? I think I got eight baits. You ordered nine ish. I think Something I like that. So this should work good. Yeah. A different. I grabbed a frog. The Gavacho. The Gavacho is a bad. I hear frog. very good things about, but I've never thrown. The Gavacho walks for a popping frog and pops. I mean, it's like the best of all worlds. And you don't have to touch it out of the box. You don't have to trim the skirts. You don't got to mess with the hooks. You just tie it on, throw it, and it's good to go. So it's a popping frog. It's got three skirted legs. Jack, Jack. I know a lot of people like it. I've never thrown this. Um, now Omnia carries the the jackal Gava, the jackal gavachos, but they always sell out of all the good colors whenever they restock, and that was the only color that was in stock. That's actually not the color I would have chosen, although it is it's a, one of their new colors. So I've never even thrown it. It's like red. It's like more of like a bronze color. Yeah, I I mean it, it, I like that natural brown red color for my frog. That's a frog color that I use. So uh, yeah, but so. But, Set alerts on Omnia when they get the new colors and stock in the Gavachos because when they get them in, they're like they're gone in like three days. So set absolutely pro, pro tip. I did see a question. I have not. Well, I had fished. I fished. Uh, what's the big reservoir out west? The Elite Series was there. Out west. Like, think. like Oahe. Nevada? I fished Oahe in a tournament. That's the only time I've been to South Dakota. But I think I, if it works out, maybe I'll try to sneak out there before our opener yet. Uh, it says, what color do you like? I don't know. Frog colors are pretty simple. Uh, I always usually carry the white, a dark, and a green, just like everybody else. Okay, my turn. I feel another hard bait. Maybe terminal tackle. So you're one for one, and I'm zero for one. <laughs> we got we got the ringed wide gap. HD did the HD, which I like better because I didn't. I bought the non HDs once, and I hooked into a fish that was in the grass, and the hook bent a bit like the non HD version of these. I didn't know that they hadn't, when I first bought these, I didn't know they had an HD and a normal and I bought the normal ones and they're, they're a little bendy. The HDs are a lot stronger. Yeah. So I use both the three odds and four odds quite a bit uh, in those. That's like my new way to flip. Like that's how I flip grass. Um, I thought I had one just laying here. Yep. Rigged I up. Texas rig with these now. I, I throw this on a Texas rig and then I throw like a craw tube or a worm. Yeah. Craw yeah. tubes. Uh, D bombs, sweet beavers, any of that anything, kind of stuff. Anything. I'm a big believer in these ring hooks for hookups. They do work. So yeah, these are good bait. Nice choice. And other people are figuring it out because they got a bunch in and they're almost all gone. Again. <laughs> so I was talking to Josh Douglas and he told me that owner doesn't make a ringed hook. So he has to have them make them for him. He has like his own private stash of the owner EWGs with the rings in, and he's trying to tell owner that they need to make them. Because <laughs> yeah. why are you let VMC buy? Why why are you letting VMC corner the? Because there's a Gamagatu version of this too. Yep. What's it called? And and Ami um, has it on their site, but it's often out of stock as well. What's the? I don't remember what the Gami version is called off the top of my it's head. It's called the Ring EWG. Hey, you got another dono. Thank you, Braden. Cheers, buddy. Thank You're you. Awesome. You're awesome, awesome Braden. Thanks for the dono. All Cheers. Right. So I'm going to reach in. Uh, Your turn. Oh, okay. I'm still zoomed in. I like this. Right. You can see me up close. So I think somebody in the chat definitely guessed this, and I probably should have guessed this. Um, dark Sleeper. Got to have Half a Dark ounce Sleeper. In the, uh, what size is this one? This is the three uh, inch. That's my favorite size and weight. That's the just the so half ounce three inches your go to and the color is Donko. That's yep, that's my favorite color too, Donko. So that bait is great out on. I fish a lot on rocky deep water in Wisconsin, and that is the half ounce three uh, three inches, the perfect smallmouth snack size. Like if you're smally fishing, that's the one I go for. If you're if you're going largemouth fishing, you can go up to the four inch, perfectly fine. But that one seems to that size and weight is perfect for fishing deep rock. Yeah, there's some support in the chat. Do you believe it? I do not own a dark sleeper, and I have never thrown one. <clears throat> you should. It's fun. It's really fun. Too. I just figured I'd you, need it for a month or two. So see, you as a you as a hardcore jig fisherman will get it. A lot of people who fish that fish it like a ki kitek or a swim bait, but jig fishermen figure out the dark sleeper better because you fish it like a jig. You don't. You know what I mean? And you get to do big hook sets on it and stuff. It's fun. I would think it would, wouldn't it? We have 167 entries into the raffle. <clears throat> and, uh, nice. Very nice. Uh, I would think Let's it would. Of course. Anytime you got offshore smallies, this should play. Yeah. And I what's what's cool about it is one of those baits you can okay. have for offshore smallies, and then you can pull up to a grass line and throw it into the grass. 
And Comes actually, it would be it's a dynamite bed bait too for smallies. But what's not? That's what I hear. <laughs> you could throw a you could throw a, a big pen on a bed for a smallmouth and it would eat it. So it's mixed results from what I hear. People, some people say it's really good. Some people have trouble with it. I think you need to throw it on. It's not a fillet lure. You want to probably throw it on 14, 15, 16, 17 pound line and a jig rod. Mm, you can that one in particular i throw i like throwing it if you have a stiff spinning rod like that you throw a tube on like a heavy like a snapping tube like a medium heavy or a really long medium i like that bait on a spinning rod and i use the just regular eight pound fluorocarbon but when you get a bite you got to kind of let him take it for a second and you just reel down and just crack them is that braid to fluoro or straight fluoro? yeah braid to fluoro yeah. yeah so that makes up for it when you're right yeah, you yeah. can really drive that hook in. You do need to set thunderous hook sets with those things. So if you're if you're fishing like a swim bait and you get a bite and you pull back and reel like a normal swim bait, you're j they're just gonna let it go. You gotta nail them with it. Yeah, but I think if you're throwing like a medium action rod with like eight to ten pound straight floral, you might have some trouble. But other than that, don't throw it on a medium. Yeah, you want a medium heavy bait caster or maybe even a medium heavy. I throw it on a medium heavy spinning rod, the Mega Bass Brigand. Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, jig rod too. Jig rod will be fine. You don't got to get fancy. Well, we better. All right. We're going to have to extend the deadline at this point. <clears throat> we can. We got a lot of entries coming in. Well, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. My turn. Uh, do I want to go soft plastic? I feel lots of soft plastics here. Okay. Ready? Wow. This is not what I expected from you. So this is not something that I have. I own some I'm of these. I'm shocked by this. I have, I don't, I have not fished them, but they are something I plan to fish this year. So that's why I went with them. Rich bought a JDM bait, everybody. Let the record show. <laughs> this is history in the making. Oh, we have 140. Yeah, we're, te we're teetering around 140 viewers. Great. Um, I have a little bit of experience with these. Um, you got to have the right hook. Uh, hook sets on these things are tricky. These are not the best hook settable baits because of the way the spine and the ridges go down. Um, you got to, they actually make specific hooks for this thing, which is weird. There's a, there's a company, a Japanese company that makes a, a thing called a bellows hook. That's a little like exaggerated EWG to, mm -hmm. to for these things. Um, so if you experience hookup issues with this, you might want to play around with your hook sizes. Yeah. Um, and they reek. So like, don't open them like they right before you eat a sandwich. Don't eat horribly. them. Don't open them in the kitchen when your wife's around. Do you, do you know what the nickname for these baits are? There's a nickname in the, in the people for people that use these. They call them G crap because it's G crack. They call them G craps because they do smell like poo. Yeah. A couple of anyway, in late. There's an email uh, at the bottom right there. See it. And then so there's pinned comments on how to enter. Whoever gets these, you can fish these weightless. They have enough salt. Um, you can fish them weightless like a fluke and just let them glide down and do nothing. Like doing nothing with these is what a lot of people like to it do. It seems like the most popular way is to throw them on a very light Texas rig. Or the Jika rig with the yeah. little weight on the mm -hmm. front of the hook. Okay, your turn. All right. So that was a surprise. I would have never in a million yeah. years guessed. It's either uh, a hard bait or some terminal tackle. Oh, the perfect med. <laughs> My favorite piece of terminal tackle of the last two years. So we got a uh, my favorite size two too. watt. So at least you got the ones with the good hook, at eighth mm -hmm. ounce. Eighth ounce is just kind of the good does everything weight tight. Like it's not super light and it's not super heavy. It can kind of go in between. The perfect net is is rad. Yeah, it's a good it's a good net. Um, definitely one of the top ones for sure. Not as good as bass tax. That's true. I was just gonna mention <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> Still got your dog pulled up. No, yeah, I was uh, went for the wrong one. While we're talking about, since you mentioned Ned heads, uh, Omnia is now carrying the Bass Tech Ned head, oh, the tungsten weedless Ned head. That's what you call transition, but folks. Also a two odd hook with a very nice strong hook. <clears throat> I saw they they restocked your free weights. The re free weights drop. Those are going fast again. They're uh, oh, the good size, the quarter. I like the quarter. Yeah, but so if you're looking, for, if you if you're in a place that requires tungsten, check these out. Or if you just like tungsten when you fish, check out the tungsten that heads at Omnia. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So people asked how the giveaway works. These boxes, we're giving them away. You have to just check the crawl, but you have, and the pinned post, you have to send one email into 
Omnia giveaway at gmail.com. One email equals one raffle. So shoot your email in and you'll be yeah. in. The favorite box thing is like if you if you think you want my box or Brian's box, but you're gonna get a box either way. Yeah. You might get a choice or not. So we when we do the emails, we might reply to the first person that gets picked and let them pick their box. But so to recap, you're getting a $25 Omnia card. So if you don't like any of the tackle we bought, you can go get whatever you want. And you're getting hoodie, hats, and baits for nothing. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. What's up, Fresno? Thanks for joining. Hey, no judgment here. This is a guilt-free, judgment-free <laughs> zone, Sean. Okay. I'm picking out. I feel a clamshell. I feel plastics in a clamshell. It's gotten to the point where I don't even remember what's in there. It's been so long. It's like a week. Six cents flush. I don't know anything about I know this is a fluke, but I don't know yeah, much about so it other it than it is that. a fluke bait. Um I have not tried these. I've seen them. What I'm most excited to try them at is on the back of a bladed jig. Oh, because it has the fork tail. Yeah. Ah, that could definitely be it. Oh, yeah. Dude, they have a, a big bluegill kind of orange bellied sunfish color that would work really good on a green pumpkin or a fire craw type bladed jig. Can I open this without breaking any seals? No. I'll leave them sealed. I'm not going to open them. But, the yeah, they have a lot of body. Yeah, this would be a good – totally could be a chatterbait trailer. Yeah, I picked Why it not? as a bladed jig. That is something uh, that you'll probably see in one of my future bladed jig videos on the channel coming up. It's five. I'm... It's over five inches, so you're getting a big profile. Yeah. Good, good call. I like the color. It's uh, kind of green pumpkin on the top and brownish on the bottom. Yeah, these cool are all things that we either use, plan to use, or excited about. <laughs> For the record, everything in my box I've actually used, but Rich is getting a little R and D on his box, which I think is cool. The thing is, I'm not actually. Like, I won't even see them. <laughs> That's true. All right, so the six cents flush. Six cents is kind of they're they're making waves in the plastics. They're doing some some cool stuff. For sure. And I think they'll be a pretty good fluke bait if you want to use them that way. But I I like them. Uh, well, as the one a, thing uh, I, bait. the one thing I noticed immediately is it has the fins on the side, which is kind of a JDM thing. Um, a lot of JDM style flukes have the little fins on the side to keep it level when it's gliding, right? So it doesn't roll. So how, how did it look in the water, Sean? You said you use it as a shadow bait trailer. Thank you, Tom. What's up? Cheers, buddy. Ooh, you rock, Tom. Hopefully, uh, you're catching some bass down there in Illinois. I've seen you post a few on Facebook. Rich is getting some good donos tonight. Yeah, this is awesome. I appreciate that, guys. Um, we have 144 people on the stream. Smash like. We're at 90 likes. Let's get 100. If you've a walked family in, you event. Have... Will's got his pops in there, so that's awesome. Nice. A little bonding over some tackle. Uh, that's awesome. 148 live viewers. That's awesome on yeah. YouTube and almost 170 total. Smash like. All right. So All it's right. my turn to reach in Your the box, turn. I think. Let's get, go for a soft plastic of some kind. It feels... Like a small bag, so I feel like it's like JDM. Like it feels like there's like four of them in there, but I don't know. Maybe not. Nope. This was my correct guess. The Muscleback X Zone Crop. Yep, nailed that one. I love Which that. Which I've been thinking about trying as a jig trailer. I think that's your main. You like it as a free rig bait and a jig I, trailer. It does everything. Like literally, that that has. Re I used to have like chigger craws and menace grubs and all that stuff. That is just the does everything craw bait for me now i throw it on jigs i throw it on free rigs you I throw it on with nests. green pumpkin very exciting yeah why not but it's just the right size the right profile um to just do a lot of stuff you can just throw it on a net head you can throw it on a shaky head i caught smallies on the river just dragging it around on a little like an owner shaky head you can just do everything with it, it the claws kind of just float up a little bit it's not like dramatic but it's enough where it gets it off the bottom yeah uh, and it's a high foot plastic it's got scent, but it's not heavily salted, so that's why it high, makes well, high float. It, it doesn't do a lot the, of plastic. Yeah, it's, it doesn't. Well, if you look at like a rage craw in the water, it just like goes like yeah. immediately. Where that one has a slow like rise, it just kind of goes. Yeah. Like that noise. So if if we don't get everything opened, we'll let emails come in. We'll give it like a ten minute warning and like cut it off. Yeah. We'll let, it, we'll let it keep going. We got 185 entries. So I mean, people are. Awesome. I mean, there's been a lot more chat. So that's slowing us down, and we want to make sure we interact and get people's questions answered. Okay, my turn. <clears throat> okay, oh, I'm man. Feeling, you got feeling cut off. That's all right. We still love you. Just being here, chatting, liking, commenting, sharing is enough. <clears throat> okay, this bait is one that I really like. This is a good choice. The Razor Shad. Yeah. 
This is a, I, I literally had one jackhammer with one razor shad that I used for two and a half months straight. And I caught dozens of pike, dozens of bass, and the razor shad never tore. Like, I literally had one razor shad for literally two months. And it just kept going. Like, <clears throat> yeah, you absolutely. can buy one one pack of this will last you two years. <laughs> yeah, but awesome bladed jig trailer. Hard as hell to put on the jig <laughs> or on the chatterbait. <laughs> like you're trying to stretch it over the the little the, the the plastic keepers. The the trick I learned is if you have a lighter on you, you can heat it up, and then that stuff slides on a little easier. But some not I don't always have a lighter on me. But yeah, razor shed, good choice. And I don't have any elastic on me or show you. But the other thing is, like instead of just trying to push it on, if you like just pull it, it and like pull it around, yeah, it's better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you're getting two chatterbait trailers, a JDM bluegill yeah. bait, and a frog. All right. It's down in the description or another video. Hellabass Spring 15 is one of the codes. Um, Email us at omniagiveaway at gmail.com. It's on the pinned comment and scrolling right there. 155 nice. people. And we got over 100 likes. Look at you guys. Will, Will said he's caught over 150 fish on a single Z-Man trailer. <laughs> I 100% believe that. I don't know how Z-Man... You know why Z-Man wakes all their money? Because they have so many good colors. Like I buy one bait and I get like seven more colors when I know the one I already have is going to last me like three months. That is one downside. Uh, they do not like dye. I heard you have to freeze them. Yeah, freeze the bait and then freeze the dye. I've never tried it. How, I'm trying to think, how do you does dye does dye turn to ice? I don't know. I don't I was know. Gonna say, like... <laughs> I just got a visual of me trying to sh shove a frozen TRD into a frozen jar of spike it. Or what color uh, razor shad was that? Was it a green pumpkin? I don't remember. Yeah, green pumpkin. Straight green yep. pumpkin. Straight green pumpkin. All right, your turn. All right. <clears throat> yes. Look, thank you, Shadow, for just busting out the codes for me. What? I got to <laughs> order some of those. Nice. Uh, and we're going to do the giveaway for Super K uh, in a little bit. So we'll, we'll we'll call the end of the email submissions, and then we'll do the drawing for Super K, and then that will give you time and let all of them come in. <clears throat> um, so that's how we'll do that. All right, I got to draw something. Yeah, they don't play well with plastics or dye. So, yeah, I appreciate it. This is awesome. The the response, everybody coming on, it's been sweet. All right. All right we got the uh, hard bait. This feels like a jerk bait. <clears throat> Ooh, the jack of rearrange. I had to throw a jerk bait in there, but I couldn't. The 110 would have been out of the budget. So I was like, what's the next best jerk bait they have that is cool and that's yeah. definitely the rearrange i've heard really good things about this i I, I bought i just recently ordered some nice and uh they're like super loud like when you throw them you hear them like yeah they they have the there's a weight transfer system it's a cylinder and when you reel back and you cast it it makes a snap noise and it sounds like you broke your rod it's like crack and you're like did i just did the guy just fly yeah. off he's like did i break my jerk bait when i cast it did i yeah you get used to it though it does make a really jarring sound. I you started using those when they came out, and um, I actually had that tied on for a lot in the spring. There was a color that I, up in smallmouth fishing in Wisconsin that did really well, and I just kept it tied on. I never replaced it with a mega bass. I just ran that one for like a month. And it, yeah, for really really nice jerk baits. Yeah, and, ch so you, and much cheaper than one ten. They're like fifteen yeah, so bucks. So you were the one ten in RT Hollow Minnow. Yeah, that's just kind of the regular minnow profile. It's got a hollow, so it's got the foil. Jackal does really good hollow, holographic, so it's got it's got a really nice shiny uh, reflective thing going on. Yeah, and I, I've heard the 130, the bigger one, is also very popular. People like that. I don't who's nobody has those except man, Omnia doesn't carry them yet. They need to. I haven't I just haven't seen them anywhere that I can impulse buy one yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bellows Gill was a green pumpkin of some kind. Uh yep. It's a, well, the colors in Japanese, so I don't know. I can't read it. Is it straight green pumpkin or is there a little fleck to it? Uh, it looks just straight green pumpkin. All right, uh, Kyle. Sometimes I do. I did go down to the river last weekend. There'll be a video coming out Monday for my trip to Wabasha. It went pretty good. Ooh, yeah, you, I, you caught a few, huh? Yeah, it was good. Nice. Will says use the four 
Hayabusa EWG <clears throat> for the bellows. Okay, I'm diving into the box. I feel a light. Okay, I know from the package what this is. I can feel it. It's definitely a spinnerbait. Oh, <clears throat> all spinnerbaits just have that thin. Oh, I'm right. Yeah. Nice. The bass man. Is this the compact or the full size? This is the compact. Nice. And the compacts only come in three ace, right? I think. Not positive. So yeah, tell tell people about the the Bassman baits. So the Bassman is a uh, Australian made spinner bait. Uh, it's one of Carl Jacobson's longtime sponsors. Uh, Omnia, I believe, has the exclusive on these in the United States. Mm -hmm. They're a very strong, high quality uh, spinner bait. Uh, I think they're almost all sold out. So this, like, the person that gets this might be getting them when nobody else can get them. So what I heard it, what I heard from some of the Omnia guys is that the Bassman, the people who make these are having a hard time getting components to finish these things like the swivels and stuff and the blades. So they just pile up big batches and when they can get them out, they get them out. And when they're gone, they just, it's a while till they make new ones. So that's why these things are kind of tricky to get right now. Yeah. It's just, yep. they can't get the output out. Pretty. Stout. This, is a, this is a really um, good color. This is called olive shad. It's like white. It's half white, half green pumpkin. Do you it's think really I was cool. going to get a bad color? I mean, I, mean, I think of... the Bassman holds up to pike about as well as any spinnerbait. <clears throat> um, yes, this, I don't know if it's this exact color, but the compact spinnerbait is what Fighter was throwing at yep. uh, Sabine, and that's largely why they're mostly sold out at Omnia. Shocking, right? But yes, yep, that's, the, that's what he was using, the compact. Cool, man. Oh, I like that the skirt has a little um, little flash, little tinsel in there too. Mm -hmm. I like that. More mm -hmm. companies either throw like a little little hint of tinsel in their skirts. Yeah, Jacob could probably talk to <clears throat> how beefy it is. I know he's throwing it quite a bit. Uh, awesome, Braden. Appreciate it. Awesome. You didn't have to do that, but it's always appreciated, buddy. Good um, job, Braden. So All right, there, your yeah, turn. Bass man. I bought some of those before I went down to Pickwick and I threw them down there a little bit. I was pretty impressed with them. <clears throat> I, I picked some up at the end of last fall and I threw them around the fall on a couple rainy days and I didn't catch any big fish. I caught a lot of like one pounders and stuff, but it, yeah, it ran really nice right out of the package. Just tie it up. Go. Yeah. He threw the white orange one. Cause the Sabine is a gar hole. The one I bought will work in normal people water, like in Minnesota and Wisconsin where the water is fairly clear. So nice. All right. All right. We're getting, yeah, uh, there's still some more stuff in here. We're not done yet. Oh, I feel like this kind of feels like a small swim bait. Soft plastic. Is this the haze dung? No, spark shad. I guess wrong. Shads. That's such a good bait. So I knew to pick some mega bass, but I probably shouldn't have went hard bait because I had, to, I had to go cheaper. Too cheaper. So the spark shad. Speak to the spark shad and why you, honestly, I've never thrown a spark shad. So I'll let you speak to it. <clears throat> Number one. It's durable as hell. You can go, you can use one spark shad for a long time. It'll last way longer than a Kitek. Um, so they're super durable. Even if, especially if you put a little glue on the hook, you can go, you can use one spark shed like all day. Um, they're three inch. They're an exact three inch. A lot of, there's a lot of like Kitex, like three, three, you know, there's a lot of baits that are kind of teeter on that three inch and don't hit that three inch perfectly. Um, and they have a wide profile. So even though it's a three inch bait, it's got a big, it looks like a meal in the water. It's kind of, it's got a little more chunk to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't know. They just catch fish. It's, it's one of my yeah. main, it's one of my main smallmouth baits. Um, I've, I've used that more on Malax than any other paddle tail nowadays. It gets big fish. Like my better size fish come off spark sheds. And I know the guys <clears throat> at Bass Brawl love to throw these. So. If you, if you want more <clears throat> spark make shad a, talk next week, tune in. Mega Bats used to make spark sheds up to seven inch. You could get a full size seven inch spark shed. They discontinued them recently, but like, uh, it, but they just take the same profile and just go boom, 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 boom. So it's like it's a bait you can get in a lot of different sizes, and they're all the exact same no matter what size you get. Yeah, probably would be decent. Like especially if you like use it on a regular jig head, tore it up, then cut it down, use it as spinner bait trailer. These that would, are the three inch. Yep, the three inch is just the really good finesse one. Uh, I when I when I fish them, I throw them way out, let them hit the bottom, and then just not try and knock off every single rock and boulder you can coming in. Fish yeah, we didn't go chintzy in either one of these boxes. We were this this is all legit stuff. This wasn't like a bunch of bobbers <laughs> and some senkos and 
This ain't no Walmart box. Come on. Yeah. Omnia's got the, Omnia, Omnia's got the good your stuff. $20 Walmart challenge. <laughs> so Simon, yes, I use it on a ball head. So the best I've, I've played with a lot of different heads. I actually, if you go into my channel, you go to punch fishing, I have a finesse swim bait that that's, that's a football head. Yeah, um, something like that though. Like a little yeah, ball head, a little football head. A little my favorite is the Gamagatu bald headed jig it's just a regular lead gamagatu bald head jig you can get them on tackle warehouse omnia doesn't hold sh doesn't stock them they need to um but go on go to my channel i have a finesse swim bait video and i have all the links for everything where you can get it but the regular old gamagatu ball head jig i got like a pile of them over here. i could go grab one but um that's the that's the head i like to use with the spark shot that's also the favorite head that um Epic Eric uses on those things. He uses the Garmy sure. ball head for sure. There's, there's a lot of good options. The Outcast, Golden Eye. The, the I don't like the I don't like the Golden Eye on the Spark Shad because the Spark Shad has a natural nose and head sure. already to it, and then you're adding like another. It just look it, it makes it a lot longer than it needs to be. Um, I like keep anyway. I love the Golden Eye head. I don't love it on a Spark Shad personally. Oh yeah. Okay, my turn. Just tackle boxes. Okashira heads. That's a business Nish idea. Nishin heads, except for the smelt head. He's talking about the Nishini smelt heads. I don't. I haven't tried one of those yet, so I can't. I have no opinion. I bet you those okay. heads that Gussie was using would probably work pretty well as well. <clears throat> so I'm picking out a bait, and this feels like a this feels like a Strike King clamshell. I know this feeling very well. Let's see if I'm right. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I've. You know those baits where you can just touch the package and you know what it is because you've opened them and closed them a million times over your life. That's I I could I could pick one of these out in my sleep. Yeah, so, yeah. the menace. It's just legit. And the, what color did I get? Ooh, this is this is a color I've never had before. Moon, I think it's a new color. Moon juice. Yeah, I have. it looks like a pearl. It's like a blue pearl. I feel like it's a little bit like the XL and three hundred nine. A little bit. Yes. You're right. It is very much. Well, like I need that. to get some of those. I don't have any of those myself, but I want to try that color, dude. It's actually really nice. It's it's translucent. I can see straight through it. You can see into your soul, right through the menace scrubs. Oh yeah, menace scrubs great. J H, thank you so much for the super chat. Headed to Wisconsin, Northwest Wisconsin tomorrow. Uh, first lure you would throw for smallies. That's exactly what I'm doing this weekend. I'm going to Northwest Wisconsin and fishing for smallmouth. And the first lure I will be throwing will be a hair jig. <laughs> I was gonna say, or something in this realm, right? Whether it's a Kaitech, a Hazedong, a Spark Shad, something like that would be a really good. Here's, here's the things I would have tied on: hair jig, finesse swim bait, jerk bait, hundred percent of jerk bait. You have to be throwing a jerk bait right now, and then um, probably a football jig. Although we might be a little, it might be a little earlier for a football jig. Finesse football jig, probably. Yeah, a small one maybe, but yes, and and don't sleep on just a wacky senko. Just a straight, especially if you get a sunny day and you got like boulders or wood or mm -hmm. something where they're going to pull up and you can. I think a lot of people forget about the old wacky Senko for small mm -hmm. fishing. Yeah. But, but this is your question, JH. Good choice. Appreciate it, man. Uh, needing out. I think we're nerding out, but awesome to see you, White Whale. <laughs> now we fell behind chat quick here. Da, da. Hey, we got 160 people now. We're, it's getting bigger because people are hitting like. Uh, JD wants to know your thoughts on the Okashira screwhead. <clears throat> Okashira. Screwhead is, uh, you got to have the right rod to throw it because they come in two sizes, a one eighth and a one sixteenth. The one sixteenth casts like crap unless you have a really long ultralight rod. So a lot of people buy the one sixteenths because it's usually the only one in stock, and it does it casts like three feet. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you need the one eighth, and the one eighth is the hard one to find. They sell out all the time, and then a one eighth you still need a, like a nice long whippy rod. They're light heads. So a lot of people go, oh, I'm going to throw it on my seven foot medium spinning rod and they throw it and it doesn't go very far. So you want kind of like a seven, three to even like a seven, seven, somewhere like a really long ass whippy spinning rod to throw the Oakshires correctly, like to really yeah. get it out there. It's essentially like a spy bait. For sure. <clears throat> yeah, that was moon juice. <clears throat> moon That's juice. True. If you uh, do have some A rigs and a three wire, that, they probably would work pretty well if you're into that. I am the I'm the last person you want to talk to A rigs about. I don't know anything about them. I'm but it would be a good option. I'll take your word for it. I uh, should have an A rig. I have a rod to throw it on now, but I don't. I don't. I haven't invested in an A rig setup. 
Oh, like that. Gumbo sounds amazing right now. <laughs> Gumbo, dude, that does sound really good. That's like, he's I even, he, Gumbo right now. See, he's got the right icon for saying a Gumbo comment too. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Braden. Uh, Josh asked, yeah, I definitely would throw an Okashira on a 742 <clears throat> for sure. I use a thing called the, the Mega Bass Felissa. Bassman ordered. Look at that. It's got himself some Bassmans. Awesome. All right, it's your turn. All right, quick question here, Brock, because uh, he's a he's an OG. He's on here all the time. Up, Best Brock? bang for your Buck Dobbins rod, Brock. I'm gonna need to know what you want to do with that rod. <laughs> maybe he's a, maybe he means with line. Like what line. series? Got to be the Fury, right? Or maybe the I Colt. Mean, probably the Fury. Bang for the buck. It's it's a toss up. I mean, a Caden or a Fury, depending People on what your your buck. The Caden seems to be gaining a following. Yeah. I don't know anything about him, but I just, I'm actually in, I actually in the Dobbins Facebook group just to, just cause I'm an addict and I got to see what's going on in all the different groups. And uh, yeah. people seem to love those cadence. Yeah. I would, I would say it really depends. So I would say for reaction baits and moving baits, I'd say fury. Like if you're throwing braid, if you're throwing frogs, if you're throwing top waters, <clears throat> spinner baits, fury. If you're bouncing jigs, finesse fishing, I'd go caden. <clears throat> Uh, I do use the Menace Scrubs on Chatterbait. I like to rig them normally vertically, though. like So it looks like a tail. Nice. Uh, I throw the grub. I threw the Menace on just a net head. Like, that, that's a good – like, Smallmouth love that thing. And actually, one thing a Smallmouth Crush does that I started doing, too, is you throw the net head on the Menace, but once it hits the bottom, you swim it. You don't just let it sit. You kind of bring it across and, like, like a like swim it like a swim bait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I – I, I throw a lot of times as like instead of a Kai Tech, I'll throw the menace grub on a little ball head. There um, you go. <clears throat> uh, menace if I want does everything. To go shallower, then I will put it flat. But if I want to get it down, I'll rig it vertically. Craig, I'm going to tell Dobbins, and Brian will definitely say NRX. Well, you can buy two of the Dobbins for one of the <laughs> NRX. So I'll put it that way. You get two um, of the DXs. Yeah, Sierras are good uh, for sure. Uh, small easy to Carolina rig in the Midwest, probably. Can they always small get a Carolina rig. It's an yeah. under super underrated for smallies. I've been thinking I need to tie that on more this year because I always default to the football jig when I'm deep dragging. I'm like, why don't I Carolina rig more? Especially if you're in current, the, the Carolina rig really seems. Ah. I is, that, tried is, that yet. is that because the current puts the action on the bait for you? I think so, and it just comes doesn't get hung as much as a football jig in the. That makes sense because the baits are going to be a 30 second bottom. lesson of fishing pool two this time of year on smallies. Is that possible? <clears throat> Here's what you need to do you need to figure out what non current or really low current area they're going to spawn in, and you just got to back up from there until you find them. And that's in a nutshell, that's what you got to do, Andrew. So we have 203 entries to the raffle. Wow, 166 live. That's awesome. We're killing it. Do, 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 do. Let's, uh, all right, I need to pick a bait since I've caught up. <clears throat> yes. Oh, my is it my turn? Uh, uh, who picked? Yeah, you went. You went. It was Spark Shad. I thought you picked something after that. Did you not? No. Uh Maybe. oh, I did the Rage Grub. Yeah, I, I did the Menace. So. Okay, I'll What's go. What's up, Liam? I'm gonna go. Oh. Ready? Oh boy. We got more soft plastics. Boom. Ooh. So your X Zone choice is the Adrenaline the new, Buck. A new Adrenaline. No, this is this is the they've had this. Oh, bait sorry. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> this is their old flipping bait. This is their um. This is their D bomb copy. So you can actually pull that one out without like ruining the bag. I think right. You can. What? The, which like, one? This one. Adrenal You can show that off to people. Yeah, you can open X zone without breaking yep. out. This is the three hundred nine, which is a really good color. Ooh, this one's kinked. Ooh. Will you boil that for the winner before you send it to him? No, they can do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd, 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 I'd boil it for them, but whatever. I mean, <laughs> hey, it's free. So the uh, yeah, the three hundred nine color for you, you guys don't know in X Zone. It's a green pumpkin on the top and then a silver pearl on the bottom. It's a really nice color because it looks. It's got the green pumpkin, but then it's got the the minnow shad looking butt. So. Yeah, it's a nice color that they make. They do this color and everything. I like the 309. The 309 Ned bait on Malax is a walleye smasher. Walleyes love the 309 Ned worm. So if you're if you want to catch walleyes, 
get the 309 X-Zone Ned rig and throw it around um, reefs. You'll catch some walleyes. Because it looks like shed or it looks like a minnow or something. I don't know. They just love I've it. Now extended the time to get into at least 10 o'clock because we're still opening baits. <laughs> Why not? Um, you still yes. have time. The Minnesota rig is still legit. I know guys that will throw that even in states that allow three. Honestly, that doesn't gonna, make any sense to me. But they always hit the same bait. It's an instinctual thing. Interesting. Uh, All right. Your turn. Yeah, there's. I promise you, there's no Guggen baits in either of these boxes. <laughs> I should have thrown one in just for fun. The Bandito bug. So apparently, they reformulated the Bandito bug and made it more not as soft because when it was originally came out, people hated that it was like a one fish bait, and apparently they reformulated it and now it's uh, stronger and people love it. Hmm. Like, apparently, it's not a bad bait. I just the, much rather throw a striking rage bug. Right, but the revised Bandito is supposedly not. Not not terrible. Uh, love it. My understanding, Matt, is that the Sobe is as close to a Caden as any other series. Yes, um, I think colors. his is a seven two, and the one in the Caden is a seven one. I think either one would be a great rod. It is not too late. See that email right there under my fingers? That's how you enter the giveaway. You still got time. New size. Uh, let's see. Nice color. Love the 309. Da, 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 da. Gobi color. YouTube cause. Jeez, he's a got a big fish in his picture. Big fans of the 309. It's uh, a good color. Uh, I only caught largies last time, but um, hopefully for the tournament, I catch some of both next weekend. It's your turn. Bait. Yes. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stretch it out. Cheers, Fire everybody. Says he wants more GDM. All right, not GDM, but Z Man Tickler Z in the Copper Ticklers. Truce, which is Copper Truce, my favorite color. If I had to pick one color for the rest of my life to throw on a Ned, it's yeah, Copper favorite. Truce. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of the Tickler Zs. Ticklers are good. Especially for smallmouth. Smallies like the ticklers. Largies too. Much. I just have a lot more confidence in that tickler Z. Mm -hmm. What is going on with my camera? There we go. <clears throat> There's that little bit of tentacles versus the regular T, uh, TRD in my book. It just. Copper Truce works in stained and clear in any water. It just works. It's just one of the yeah. colors that you can just throw on and you know you're going to get something. And even in clear water, smallies love that chartreuse. Mm hmm. Uh, Mark, so I'm that, not fishing the Jude. I'm fishing the TBF Team Trail the Sunday before. So I got those to pair up with the Nedheads. So those are those in the Nedheads are supposed to be in some sim, simpatico. Yep. So you're ready to net rig. I think this is a Tickler Z reference from Sean. <laughs> I like I it. I don't think Omnia carries the banjo minnows. <clears throat> they should. Love the vids. Hey, hey, thanks, man. Appreciate the uh, you, appreciate the support. <clears throat> I would too. I don't watch my own videos. <laughs> Good point. Spots do love the tickler Z's as well. What's a spot? <clears throat> Just kidding. You gotta drive south. All right. I know. Um, you, I think. Okay, my turn. I think there's one. I think we're down to the last few here, everybody. Okay. It's another plastic. Rich went hog on the plastics. So if you're in the plastics, you're getting a good box. Kind of a, All right, I'm like not looking. Ooh, react oh, I have backwards. Reaction innovations. That's a different. Is it going to be? Oh, it's uh, the oh the sweet beaver. Nice. Sweet beaver and tramp stamp. It's just awesome. So the tramp stamps are black and blue, but black and blue, green pumpkin laminate. <clears throat> right. It's. I mean, when you look at it from a distance, it looks black and blue, but when you look up close, it's got green pumpkin right. on the. So green on pumpkin on one side, black and blue on the other. If you can't decide which color to throw, you just throw both at the same time. To be fair, they kind of can't tell the difference too much. That one, yeah. These ones seem a little dark. Mine. These are, this one like... seems super dark. This is a dark batch. Yeah, I would say that this is a super. This is almost straight black. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> How do you like yeah, to throw so... these? I'm guessing flipping, flip jig trailer. Them. Sometimes, yeah. So like flip them until the head gets torn off, and then I put them in a little <laughs> tupperware and I use them as a jig trailer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I I um I tend to use the rodent more than these just because I don't know why I have a I have some back I have like a weird backlog of rodents which is essentially like the same mm -hmm. profile as these so when I need like a do nothing plastic I'm usually reaching for the rodent but just just because I have a ton of them this is a cancel culture free zone Thomas we're safe. <clears throat> 
What 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 could we say that would get us canceled? Like not like fishing related, not like P is PC related. <clears throat> the we like they're better than Outcast. We like Mystery <clears throat> Tackle Box. <laughs> All right. All right. I think I only have one in here. Yeah, keep going. I, you might be down right. to your last one. I feel like I got a uh, clamshell soft plastic bait. Oh, there we go. Speaking of the striking ridge bug. That is my all time favorite. I, I love the I love the menace, but if I just don't know what to fish and I'm like, I have no idea what to throw, the rage yeah. bugs come out. And blue craw, which is a great color. I it's love that color. Basically a magic cross swirl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like hey, for those that are not happy with the durability of your bandito bugs, those this is the so bandito fast. bug before the bandito bug was cool. And this thing's like <laughs> So. One, fit, one fish wonders. I hate when I tie on a fresh one and I throw it into like a reed line and I get like a like a ten incher that whacks it and shreds it. And I'm like, damn it. Because yeah. also yeah. good jig trailers as well. I like. I, I good used on to a, throw a wobblehead. Good on a Texas rig. Good flipping. Good on a football jig. So many things. Um, so I was gonna say football jig is a good football jig trailer. When I want a lot of action in dirty water, I will throw the spicy beaver. <clears throat> so I'll throw that on like a a, a bigger jig uh, mm -hmm. when I'm trying to move water, um, or sometimes on a big swim jig. The rage bug right. is just the in case of emergency, break glass, throw a rage bug. Why is the lizard forgotten? Just because there's so many plastics these days. <laughs> <laughs> I used to throw the I I I had a pack of zoom lizards, the same pack for probably six years. <laughs> <laughs> like I always had them, I never threw them. You know, back in the old days, what I used to throw is this: I used to throw a split shot rig with a zoom lizard on the back. That used to be my Carolina rig on a spinning rod. Yeah, that's I my used to old, throw school. old school power lizards all the time. Power lizard is that the Berkeley version? Yeah. Okay, I only had the zooms, but yeah, I used to think I was cool because I was like, I'd put a split shot, run the hook, the lizard, throw it out, and then I'd just slow drag it, and I I would say. I, I never caught big fish doing that. About as close to a 0% chance without saying zero. <laughs> What's that? Ask me Taylor's question. Would you see DNR? We're in the land of walleyes, and we're just oh, gosh. lucky that the bass are good. They would do a Sherry Lunker program for walleyes in a second. Not for yeah, bass. I don't even think they do that, honestly. But, <clears throat> but I'm saying if they were going to do a program to get big fish, it wouldn't be bass. Yeah. Or musky. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going into the box. I think this is my last one. It is my last one. Aww. Ah, yeah. oh, you zone. you got more X zone than I did. <laughs> What's up with that? But I plan on trying them more this year. They are good. This, this is I'm super excited about, honestly. And you picked the uh, green pumpkin blue flake. One thing I like about X zone is they have like four different green pumpkins. They like green pumpkin, black, green pumpkin, blue. I think they have a green pumpkin purple, but they have a lot of different. They don't just have green pumpkin. They have like, if you feel like you want something different, they have different. I'm excited about this one as a flipping bait. Yes. And so as a swim jig trailer, as a bladed jig trailer, lots of things. I like that it's slender. It's like a mana scrub on steroids, honestly. Yeah, it's like they took one and stretched it. And made it more aggressive. Yeah, it looks nice. I like that it's got the deep, it's got the deep hook keeper in there. Actually, it's got on it's got like a spine down one side and then the deep hook keeper on the other. Mm -hmm. like that. It's nice. Very good day. <clears throat> All right, I think Work. I got maybe am I, one. Are you out in here? I do have one more thing. Oh, so Brian's into pairings. This is like a fine wine and cheese tasting event. Uh, so he's got the a good size dimension screw head jigs from Mega Bass. I forgot those were right there. <laughs> to pair with your three instructions. Yep. yep, that's the small mouth. If you're in a small mouth or spotted bass, that put those two together and go after them. Um, I've never caught a large mouth on those. Only small ones. I don't know why. Maybe just because I don't throw them in largemouth lakes that often. But yeah, so that's the good size. That's the one eighth. That's the heavier one that you can actually cast. Unlike the one sixteenths. Yeah. So these are the one eighth. Oakshire screw heads. Good looking baits. Yes. Uh it is like I like when I first saw it, I was like, uh a striking mana scrub and a zoom Z crowd had a baby in a good way. That's so true. So do you want to do a cutoff here? Uh, why don't we cut off in a couple minutes? For so you got six minutes to get your stuff in. Six minutes, 10 o'clock.
to get your emails in. This is last call. Yep. So your questions at when the cutoff goes, then I'll do the super K drawing. And that'll give people time. Like it'll take time for everything to register. Uh, and then we'll do the drawings. We you have Mississippi river this weekend. What should I bring for baits? So based on what I saw fishing the river last weekend, uh, water temps in the main river were in the low fifties. Some of the backwaters are getting in the mid fifties. You honestly could have some smallies spawning because when the water temps or when the water temps even close and it's stable, they can get up and get down. I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, oh, man, it's. I would definitely bring something. Maybe not this quite finessey, but like a little bit bigger. You know, whether a suicide shad swim bait, a kai tech, uh, something like that uh, on a jig head. Have that so you can slow roll that on current scenes. It really depends on if you're a boater or a non boater. Um, Jerk baits uh, have something you can pitch and flip. A swim jig is going to play. Uh, a Carolina rig could be good. Um, maybe a wobble head with like a, a rage bug on it. Something Ooh, you can cut some water good. with. Um, those would be some of the things that I would do. Uh, the wobble head is very popular in the river. Man, I fell behind on chat. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I almost want to reorder the box for myself, for sure. <laughs> you could just pull your old order back up and just... I would say 90% reset. of what's in the box I opened, I would put in my tackle box. Yeah, same here. You picked out good stuff. Um, the only one that I don't know really... Yeah, no, you picked all good. You picked all stuff. The only thing that I'm not, like, up on or comfortable with would be the that six cents fluke. I guess I would just have to play around with that one. That's like sure. the only kind of unknown to me, but yeah, no, you picked up good Eight, stuff. You're right? always a winner, buddy. And the hoodies are freaking sweet. Yeah. Shout out to Pete and Jacob and the rest of the Omnia crew for throwing in some awesome swag into the box. So if you guys missed the start of this in the box, our hoodies, look at this one. This one's cool. It's got, I want to know which jerk bait is this? Is this a one ten? Who? I mean, it's gotta be a, uh, a... Oh yeah, that's kind of generic. I was gonna say it's got to be a rapla, right? Up here, like that's got to be the. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't uh, look like head. a shadow wrap. Maybe a husky shadow jerk. It's got to be a shadow wrap. It's pretty cool. Though. What size hooks are those? Six. Um, yes, Josh, you definitely could get drawn if you left a comment on the video from last week. The stream was super K. If you left a comment there, you definitely have a chance to win in the next few minutes when I draw that. If you haven't, then no, you can't win both. Uh, yes, I do fish max scent. I'm a pretty big fan of the general, which is the main one I've used. Uh, obviously the hit worm and the flat worms are good for drop shots, but I did buy some of the chunks and I am going to play with that. I've seen John mm. Cox smash enough fish on the max scent meaty chunk that I definitely bought some. Uh, I don't know. I like all their blue. I mean, Kizu Ghoul, Kizu, Kizu Gill is a really good one, but they're all pretty good. It just whatever catches your eye, they all catch them. I gotta get some super K jigs now. That you got a code. I have no reason not to order. Yeah. Uh, what did What did uh, they claim? So two minutes to get your emails in. The email scrolling on the bottom. It's pinned in the comments. It's Omnia Giveaway at Gmail dot com. Yes, super K drawing is from last week's stream. Bob, you're already in. I remember your comment. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'm just to make sure I'm not missing any. Uh, and like, <laughs> I don't know. Depends. Are if you're a medium now? Yes. If you were a large already, then no, Sean. Um, yeah. The I will say the hoodies are the Russell. They're they're pretty roomy. So a large. If you usually wear an extra large hoodie, the large will probably fit you. Yeah. Hopefully you can see it. It's it just went under the screen right there, Ryan. You got one minute to get your email in. After I got a timestamp on these email, so after ten o'clock, we're not counting them. Ooh, nice! Twelve packs of the general for less than two bucks a pack. Nice <laughs> score, buddy. I love a. Uh, yeah, uh, I just you guys are on fire. I can't like catch up. This is good. Keep it coming. We got 161 viewers, and yeah, still that's awesome. Average yeah. watch time, almost 15 minutes hanging in per person. <laughs> awesome uh charles never heard of her 
Is Travis, <laughs> is Travis Manson still alive or is he just busy? He's, he's busy fishing. He's probably guiding. He's probably making money. I think he yeah. was in a tournament. Like he's a tournament. He had a tournament going on. Yeah, maybe. He, uh, you know, he was he down at that? Nope. He's got a different. I think he's down practicing for Chickamauga. He's got a tournament coming up on Chickamauga. All right. You guys are in the crunch time. Less than a minute. Yeah, to less get than a minute. In. Yes, less. absolutely. We definitely plan to give insight on each lure. <clears throat> that was part of the game plan. Uh, I have not been up to Snake River by Pine City. I have buddies that grew up there, and it's definitely good. And it's sneaky good for largemouth and frogging in the summer. All right. We are officially closed on the raffle. Eve, Evan is the last person. Casey, I definitely thought about throwing some Sixth Sense hard baits in the box. That definitely crossed my mind. The lotto will be televised. It will be in about 15 minutes. Uh... Yeah, we're going to draw names, but I have a... I'm a tech guy. I have a back end. I have a process running in the back end that's grabbing all these emails and sorting them into a spreadsheet for us yeah, automatically. I can see them. Oh, yeah. We can actually show the sheet. So everybody like we can do a quick scroll. So everybody well, like, yep, I can see it's myself. Still, it's still pulling people in. No, so. I know, but we can yeah. like legit show it. Like I can like hide it. So like your email yeah. isn't on the screen, but I can just show it. So everybody can be like, oh, yep. I, my, my, I got counted. True. Uh, so I'll hide that. Cool, um, cool. And I'll show that right when we go to draw. All right. Um, we have officially 232 entries. Nice. Braden, you are the MVP tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 232 is our cutoff. <laughs> That's a lot of entries. That's way more than I thought we were going to have. So we'll see how the processing holds up. Yeah. The I think it's got a... They were pretty picked over. Uh, so hopefully Omnia gets a restock. Otherwise, that definitely probably would have been something so, I would have thrown in. Can I ask you a question? Is the first side just selling out because it's new? And everyone wants to check it out, or is there like a was this a does it was this a bait that did not exist until Berkeley put it out? Um, so the Fritz side has been super productive. People, I mean, like it's legit catching. Like people are catching them on them. Uh, okay. It came out last spring, winter. <clears throat> uh, was in pretty high demand then. Still in high demand. John Cox won a tournament on it, and he's not even a cranker. Um, hmm. <laughs> so it's it's a good bait. Uh, is it yeah, I didn't even see that. I was, I guess, I was busy with hockey tonight. But Jay Dizzle is in second on Douglas today. He has sixteen pounds. He has like sixteen nine, and the leader has like sixteen twelve or something. Like he's like really a close. Tie for first, basically. Yeah, he's only ounces out of first. Nice. Well, congrats, Josh. Hope you keep it, get it done, bud. Um. Yeah, that's sick. Water temp, Minnesota. I haven't been out in the lakes. I was out I was out this week and it was like fifty four ish mid fifties ish like up here in the north metro. I'm sure down in your area it's warmer. Yeah, it's probably hovering right around fifty. First champ spinning rod, seven three minimum length recommendation on several sevens. So champion seven thirty two, I think is a thing. I think that's a two power. I like most of my spinning rods are two power. Uh, for most of my like drop shot, Ned, that type of stuff. If you want to snap tubes, throw shaky rigs, throw a, like a Senko, then I'd probably go up to 733. Yes. Yeah. If you guys got any rods, reels, equipment questions, John, it's only on the repost. So if you got about two minutes to get a comment on that last video, uh, I haven't fished a rainy lake in a long time. Depends on the time of year. If it's in the summer, just go top water and go nuts. Rainy. Rainy is such a big body of water. People, I know people go up there and, and they just, oh like, they'll go long stretches where they don't catch anything. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm missing any of your guys' stuff. There should be some restock on Monday and Tuesday. I don't know what? what they're restocking. Fritz side? Maybe. Yeah, Jacob, you got to tell us what you're restocking. Yeah, please. Come on. Give us info. I caught like 20 last week in the Red Delta in Wisconsin. What? How deep does the Fritz side run? They have so a that, five, seven, and nine. Okay, so it's various. Are they all the same weight? Just different uh, depths? They're slightly different. They're a little bit bigger sizes for the bigger ones. Interesting. Man, that's the chat is crazy. That's good, though. Isn't isn't Berkeley Has Berkeley had a hit crankbait before this Fritz side? Like stuff, something that's just selling out left and right? I can't think of one. What's that? It says Berkeley had like a hit crankbait before the Fritz side, like something that just sold out left and right. I don't think they have. I think this could be like their biggest hit. Probably. 
can't Nothing think of another. Mine. Yeah, I can't think of another Berkeley bait that was like hard to get. Can you throw weightless worms on a Caden seven one two? Probably. I probably prefer the seven one three. Just personal preference. Depends on what weightless worm to. Are you talking like a trick worm or like a six inch? Yeah. Single? Yeah. Fritz side is the restock early next week. So nice. Okay. Going. Well. So like, on show them how to do it. Fishing, I'll show you how to do it. And this is not the Fritz side, but you can go to the Fritz side page and then you go down here and nope, where is it? What? I thought there was a, oh, they're not out of stock. I got to pick something that is out of stock. So we'll go to the Fritz side. But here's the, uh, and so if something's out of stock, oh, <clears throat> so you can go notify me when it's in stock. If you're logged in, you just hit subscribe. And you'll get an email notification as soon as it's restocked, and you can beat your bait grubbing buddies to them when they get there. And that's rods, reels, baits, whatever they have. Oh man, man! Sorry if I missed some of your chat. It's just too much. Like if you absolutely need your chat answered, repeat it, or just put like a ninety-nine cent super chat on it or something like that. But try to answer as many as we can. We are gonna do the. So super honor, cake chat, but dry in a second. So on your production meeting, my process that I'm running hit a quota. Hit a quota. So it only processed one fourth of all the emails into the spreadsheet, and it says now you gotta if to keep going, you need to pay. Wow. Oof. So, but I have the number of I have the number that of people that are in the in the raffle and everyone's in the correct order in the email. So we have all the emails. Yeah, we're good. We just um we'll be fine. If we just figure out the numbers, we we will be able to get everybody. So we just might not be able to do it live? Uh we could do it live. I just might have to manually find the people. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Which is totally doable. All right, so we are going to do the Super K pick. So for you guys that made a comment on last week's stream, we are going to do that. So I have that. just need to pull that up. And get that. While Brian's figuring things out, he's going to need some time. So I've got the video from last week in. <clears throat> And I'm going to fetch, include replies. We're not allowing duplicates. <clears throat> Comments are loading. 58 people entered last week's. So one in 58 chance that somebody's going to win some sweet stuff from Super K. I do need to mix in some diamond. I actually need to refill on my drink, but we've just been so busy. I haven't had time. All right. Drum roll. Let's see who it is. Caro Ferg, black and blue in our dirty water here in central Arkansas. Congratulations. Congratulations, Caro. I need to write that down so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. But Caro, you need to get a hold of me on Facebook, reply to a comment, or send me a DM on Instagram or something like that so I know how to get a hold of you. So please do that. Yes. And then congratulations, Caro. Probably some people are jealous. I don't know if Carl Ferg is here or not. So there. So what the? Uh, how much time do you need? Are you basically no? No. Yeah. Well, how we're gonna do it is, or how we're gonna do it is, Gmail sorts into pages of fifty emails per page, and so the person, the last person to enter their email at ten o'clock will be number one, and the person who um, sent the first email in will be number two thirty-two, and then we're gonna we're random draw numbers, and then I'll just find out which email that is in the in the in the in the list and right. we'll know exactly. it won't it won't take me it's long. like caroline is here yeah we're good congratulations make sure so, you send me a dm somewhere 
uh, so that I can get your information and we can get that over to Super K and they can send you something. So, yeah, awesome. so if you want to pull open a browser and go to random.org, yeah. uh, you used it before, right? Yep. Okay. Let me just, uh, yeah, so so just want to show people quick. So we're going to yeah. draw you the winners here. Just so you guys can know this is as legit as possible. You're going to get some cool stuff. Basically, we had an automated system to pull all these entries, but we hit a quota. Well, we have to pay. We have to pay money for the translation. Right, so we're not going to do that. So we're going to manually. But just you know, like we had a legit system. This was our plan, so that you could see. Like oh, I was number forty-five. You're just going to have to trust trust Brian that if more than uh, higher than fifty gets caught, that you got. But so you can see, you guys all got your entries in here. The people that got in early, and we're going to do a manual. Yep. Uh, we can screenshot it for verification if anyone doesn't trust us. Yeah. <laughs> that might happen sometime, Fireman. That's here. a good idea, actually. I would love to go fish in uh, some of those southern lakes that Rich fishes because I never get to southern Minnesota like ever. Yeah. So your neck of the woods would be fun. They don't eat fish. hazy dong shads down that dirty water. Maybe they do. Hey, I'll, bring, I'll just bring a frog. You bring your new terminal. Oh, wait, that's not yours. Never mind. So. Random number generator. So one one to two thirty two. All right, drum roll. So we're doing okay, two winners. Do Google. Let yeah. me uh, let me pull it up. All right. So we're gonna do one to two thirty two. Right, and I'll write down the numbers you pull, and I'll find the people. And I'm gonna hit this generate button. All right. And somebody's one, gonna win. Are you ready? One, I'm ready. Two twenty eight. Somebody late. <laughs> No, early. We're going to do er that'll be well, one of the early, early people. All right. Yeah, that'll be an early person. So, number one will be the last person who submits. We'll so, it actually should one. be somebody that was on that list. Oh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll find them. Give me a, just give me a minute. Go ahead. Right. Do the, let's do the second person. Oh, that's right. There's a second. I forgot. There's a second <laughs> winner. I forgot about that. So, the first winner is number two. I'm going to write that down just so I don't forget. 228. We're going to hit it again. <clears throat> 32. Ooh. All so right. we got somebody early and somebody late. <clears throat> I can find the 32 first because that's I already have that page up. So give me a minute. All right. So like, answer some questions. We have like some like like elevator music. Dun, 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 dun. Um send a DM to Punch Fishing on Instagram. He can probably help you hunt one down. <clears throat> <clears throat> if anybody can. Uh Casey says he's out. I don't know. This is the suspense is killing me. So uh, I think I think I've selected like, while you're talking. I mean, so the people that came late, like my swag, the hat. If you are winner number one and number two, and you pick my box and you want a visor, just let me know. I'll take my Arsenal braid shears and make you a visor, almost as nice as this one right here. Um, I also had the sweet Omnia hoodie. Which I had not seen before. I feel like this one's pretty new. All right. I have our first winner. First winner. First winner is I'm gonna star them. If you wanna you if you, you do you wanna pull up in the Gmail account, I just starred the email so you'll know who it is for number one. Okay, or you just want me to read it. You can just read it up. Okay, it is Bow Fishing Daily. Bow Fishing Daily? Yep. His screen name is Bo Judd. Robert Judd. Bo Judd. Bo Judd. Robert Judd. Bo I've definitely seen Bo Judd. I don't know if he's still here. He was on here earlier. You are the winner of... He didn't say what box he wants. All right. Well, he gets the first pick. We can send him an email. Okay. Bo Judd, are you still here? I wouldn't cut the sleeves off the hoodie, but if you want to do that, you can, but I will not Wait, do that. That's the Bill Belichick. We could Bill Belichick the hoodies for you, where you cut the sleeves off. Okay, let me find the next winner. That should be easy. 228. Well, actually, Bo Judd is the second winner. Well, doesn't either are. It's he's he's a winner. Well, Bo Bo Judd was number two thirty-two, right? That is correct. Yes. He's thirty-two. So he was the second winner. So uh this person will get oh Bo Judd's here. What's up, Bo? You get a box, buddy. You're getting a box. So if uh, you get whichever one 228 doesn't pick. 
So let's see. He said he'll take Rich's box if the other person doesn't claim it. Nice. So what? I, the only thing is, like, is Rich's box the one you opened or the one I opened? I guess <laughs> that's a good point. Just say <laughs> say which say a bait. No one know which box you're talking or about. Or which like the box that this person opened? I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, that's awesome because Bo Judd's an OG, so I'm awesome. Like he's on here all the time, so that's awesome. I'm glad. Just no offense to people that are new, but like Bo's always active. He's commenting, so that's awesome to see him win. <clears throat> okay, we're almost almost got it here. I do know that Streamyard is working on a generator, which hopefully that comes out soon, which will make giveaways much more fun. Okay, winner number two or number one, whatever the other number winner, one winner, Dustin Taylor. Dustin, congrats, buddy. Another guy that's on here all the time. Dustin Taylor. So some of your regulars are hitting? I'm pretty sure he's here. He was earlier. Unless he had to go to sleep. <clears throat> nice. We'll give it all a right. second. Are so you here, Dustin, Dustin? He did not he also did not specify which box he wants. So Oh, Boja said he wants the sweatshirt with the jerkbait on it. So the box That's my you box. opened that I picked. That's your box. The Boston's box. here. So I will Dustin, make a note of okay that. Are you okay with the box I opened? My, the the, with the this punch hat, or do you want the one that uh, Brian opened? <clears throat> the suspense is killing me. Yeah. This is that's awesome that they're both here and they were here the whole time. Hey, pull up with that question real quick. So Hunter Bell says, Brian, when you put the Alderbaran on the X-Bytes, does it become tip-heavy? No. Nothing is tip-heavy on that rod. It's You can't. It's so light. There's no weight to make it tip-heavy. So, Hunter, the answer is no. Sorry, I just saw a random comment. All right. He says, let him pick the one he wants. So, that's awesome. Cool. All right. All right. So, so Dustin's gonna get Dustin. You're getting my box. So I'm that has sending Mega Bass Dustin stuff. the box I opened, and you're yep. sending Bo I'm his just, box. Bo's getting the jerk bait hoodie with all the X Zone baits and the Terminator frog. I, I have to say, I think our bait selections were pretty good, no matter where they fish. Like, I don't think our For stuff sure. was like just straight Minnesota or no. Wisconsin. I think I think our baits could pretty much work anywhere. Yeah, maybe the the dark sleeper is a little smallish, but that's true. To eat it, but like the, that one's like fringe, right? But most, I mean, everything is. Uh... Yeah. So the also to note, Rich gave you a bunch of jerk bait or a bunch of chatterbait trailers, but you didn't get a chatterbait. <laughs> we didn't have the budget for a jackhammer. Good segue. Oh, gift cards. You can use your gift card to buy chatterbaits. This will buy you one use jackhammer. Code Hellabass Spring fifteen. On top of that gift card to get yourself some chatterbaits, Jeez. or you can go to Super K and use the code and get some clackens. So there's a lot of options to get yourself yes. some jerkbaits or uh, chatterbaits. Let's go buy you a really sweet jackhammer to put the, that razor shad on. The and so if you guys that didn't win, if you guys thought this was cool and you appreciate what Amia did, Go check them out. Yes, shout out to Omnia. We we kind of told them we were doing this, and they threw in the hat and the hoodie and when in the gift card when they totally didn't. They definitely need sweetened to, so. it up. I mean, they. I'll, I yeah. mean, basically, they doubled the value mm -hmm. for the most part. So big shout out to uh, Brad and Matt and, and Pete and Jacob and all the Omnia yeah. crew. They're awesome. Yeah, so definitely like the Clackens from Super K as well, and thanks to Super K for doing the giveaway too. So I mean, just everybody that's like Arsenal. Like this doesn't hey, happen without those companies helping out. And it's like tackle is tough to come by. And these companies are being very like giving with their very low supply of the things they have. Yeah. So just the fact that any of us are getting like discounts, stuff to give away, all this, you know, the perks are great, even in the tough um, economic time of tackle uh, orders. And, you know, they're just not getting stuff in. And the fact that they're hooking everybody up on this stuff, even when they don't have a ton of inventory is awesome. So they don't have to do it. So it's great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Braden. You've been way over beyond what you need to do, but that's awesome. He's all hopped and up on the combo. Make sure if you're going to subscribe, make sure you watch, like check out some of the content. Like don't just subscribe and not watch. Like it's important to watch. Um, I'd rather have you watch than subscribe, but well, yeah, the, the YouTube doesn't reward subscriptions. They right. were subscription is like an empty vanity number. What they really care is like, do you watch content? And then do you keep watching it? And how long do you watch it? Yeah. 
Views so. matter to your payment and to the algorithm. And everything in YouTube's currency is views and watch time, not not subs. Yeah. And so, so for those that came in late, I talked about this earlier. Uh, next week, Bass Brawl Outdoors. We're going to probably get geeky I'm gonna be watching that sonar and hummingbird stuff and deep fishing and smallies and largemouth. It's going to be really good. Yeah. So so I have to give you some credit there. You've had some guys from like the elite series and stuff that I've literally never heard of. And then I start listening to them and they've been great guests. Like some guys that I was like, who's this guy? And then I listen for two minutes and then 40 minutes go by and I've been listening the whole time. So I just got to give you props for um, finding really interesting interview guests that maybe, I mean, you're getting the Brock Mosley's next week, but you know, you're getting some guys that I've, I've, I've never heard of, but are, you know, very, uh, very good on the microphone and are, you know, very interesting. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's like cool to get some of the guys that are big names. It's cool to get guys that are up and coming. It's mm -hmm. cool to get some of these small tackle companies like super K and dream right. smashers. Uh, and something like, so I'm just trying to mix it up and, uh, it just, yeah. And then like in the three weeks we're getting Brock Bowles. Yeah. And there'll be other cool guests. Like, Every week we're going to have somebody like it's going to be like, hey, we're going to do like fun stuff like we did tonight with Brian. We're going to talk to <clears throat> local anglers in Minnesota, Wisconsin. We're going to talk to Elite Series pros. We're going to talk to FLW people. We're going to talk to tackle manufacturers. It's going to be <clears throat> a little bit of everything. Um, right. Gussie was an interesting guy. Gussie's always a good guest. That guy's yeah, so, really fun. He's so like lighthearted and everything is, you know, he's just like one of those guys that's just positive all the time. It's um, fun. it's up to you, Nick. I mean, as long as you're getting the content and you're learning and having fun, I mean, it doesn't matter. Do I make a penny or two of you on YouTube? Yeah, but that's not what it's all about, right? <laughs> it's more about you enjoying the content and uh, whatever's the easiest way for you to consume it. That's awesome. Not everybody has two hours to sit down and watch a live stream. So I will say this episode is going to be terrible on a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, this episode is very visual. You, like, want to pull over and pull up the YouTube video and be like, I need to see what they're talking about. Yeah, so if you made it this far in the podcast version of this episode, then um, shout out to you because <laughs> you didn't you didn't get the full experience. Yeah, and if you guys enjoyed this, like whether it's the podcast, so you can just search Hellabass on the pod, your favorite podcast app, Apple, Spotify, Pocket, whatever, you'll find it. Um, and there's a ton of great stuff. Like you want to go back and listen to Gussie. Gary Dobbins, uh, Josh Strachner. Who is it? Jeff Bertrand. Bates. Like there was just so many good ones. Was it Bertrand that you had recently? Bertrand was on like two weeks he ago. He was so good. I love Bertrand. That guy is, that guy is, you can tell he has a podcast or a show because yeah. he talks like a host of a TV show. Like he's yeah. so good. He has a decent uh, mic. So he sounded good. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I really liked the Bertrand episode. That was good. Yeah. Bo and uh dustin if you didn't send your e mailing address go ahead and send it otherwise we'll re ask you for it in, a, well, in the reply so either way, yeah well, well we can shoot you an email from that account and then you can shoot back your yeah. info yeah so um, we'll get we'll get your address this is a good point like we don't talk about this like the omnia premium membership brian you want right. to talk about that like yeah so omnia not i don't know what other tackle shops that are doing this online I can't, I, I shop at a million tackle shops and none of them have a cashback program. Like it's pretty cool. There's other companies that do this, but like not a straight tackle shop. So if you're an Omnia member and they do run membership promos once in a while, so you can just go and pay 30 bucks and become a member anytime you want. But sometimes they do promos where if you sign up, you get some instant credit card or sorry, instant gift card back. But if you're a member, this is the, there's two things about being a member at Omnia that are awesome. Number one, you're getting 10% back at all times for credit. So even if you stack a code, so if you use a code like Rich's code, you buy something, you're getting that 15% off, but then you're also getting another 10% put into credit. So you're essentially getting 25% off on every click. Also, the biggest one is free shipping regardless of the size of package. So you could order one little pack of snaps or swivels and it's free shipping. So I, I hate... $50 minimums on tackle purchases. I hate it. Cause I'm like, I'm, I buy something and I'm at $28 and I'm like, do I make the decision of spending eight bucks on shipping or do I just put another jerk bait in and get the free shipping? But then I spent more than I really wanted to. You don't have to think about that when you're an Omni member, you just put something in your cart, you buy it, you hit send and, and it just shows up. So it takes away that stress of trying to hit the, the minimum shipping amount. And amounts. I know there's a lot of, you go on the message boards, you go in Facebook groups. There's a lot of people complaining about, 
one of the most popular places to shop and how long it takes to ship if you don't mm. pay the premium shipping. Right. And uh... <laughs> someone said, uh, oh, the memberships are annual. So when you sign up for a membership, it's a 12 month membership and then you will lose it. You have to re up. So yeah, but regardless whether you're a membership or not, like they pretty much it goes out like that day or the, your sh order, you, depending on what time you order, it'll either ship the day you order it or the next day. I think they're promising if you order before three o'clock central, they'll probably get your package out same day, which is pretty awesome. So I, I okay, I got to tell you a story. So I literally ordered a panfish St. Croix rod. Um, I ordered this from Omnia Monday morning and I had it to my door by 11 o'clock Tuesday. But I live in Minnesota, so they're local to us. So our shipping is obviously really quick. But the point is they shipped me a little panfish rod in less than 24 hours. Like that's crazy. And I didn't pay and I'm a member, so I didn't pay shipping. Not that you pay shipping on a rod anyways, because it's over the amount, but point is it's dope. Yeah. So what is it? Twenty nine ninety nine? Is that right? I think it's thirty bucks for the straight membership. Um you so can if you buy three hundred dollars in tackle, right? The ten percent pays itself off, regardless of the free shipping. That's one reel. <laughs> if you right. if you buy if you buy a metanium, boom, you paid for it. So before we go, I had a question. This is a question I wanted to ask you on on air. And I think this is something that not fishing related. Uh -oh. So you and I are both YouTube guys. We make content, but we also probably watch a lot of YouTube. I know I do. So what is that? It's a steel Mountain Dew can. It about what country? What language uh, is it's that? It's like Middle Eastern of some kind, I think. How is that old? Is that like it's a pull tab? Kind of old, like 90s maybe? My okay. uncle got it when he was uh, overseas in the Navy. That's awesome. Oh, Jacob's back at like 2 o'clock now. They're getting busy. <laughs> <laughs> I always do my Omni orders in the morning or really late at night. That's about my how it works for me. So I was going to ask you, what are your favorite YouTube channels that are not fishing related? Like what hmm. non-fishing YouTube channels are you like? If you see a video, you're watching it, like regardless. Well, that's interesting. There's got to be a couple. <clears throat> I, so I feel I, like the, the viewership's about to dive. Like our live views are going to go, but um, there's got to be a couple. Just like so what? I watch some YouTube like channels about YouTube, but ah, I don't interesting about that. Um, I've been lately getting into some like food stuff. Like Cook, that cooking? dude can cook, and I like food wishes. That guy's always good. I haven't seen that. <laughs> There's this other guy that's hilarious. He calls himself his, his channel's not called Uncle Roger, but he calls himself Uncle Roger, and he does like reaction to other people cooking, mainly fried rice, and then rips on for not making fried rice the way they're supposed to. And he does it in an over exaggerated Chinese accent that's fake. Oh no, really? It's kind of funny. Um, that's pretty awesome. So I would you say non fishing. It's probably like watching stuff about YouTube or streaming, and then watching right. stuff about like DaVinci Resolve and editing. Okay, so tech and technical then, stuff. Food stuff is probably the stuff that I. Oh, and then so another one, uh, Mark Rober. He, he like is amazing. Fight. The he engineering guy. Amazing stuff. One video per month, but that stuff is like, and it's super family friendly. Like, right. Great channel to watch with your family, Mark Rober. His he's the his squirrel ninja course was my favorite. The, the ninja course squirrel video was genius. Yeah, that that is like that's a good place to start. The uh, search uh, either Mark Rober or uh, squirrel. Oh, yeah, of course. Brayden has a good recommendation. If you're into cooking, the binging with Babish is great. He's the guy who shoots the videos from the neck down, and he's got like he's a really good cook, uh, and he does recipes from TV and movies. So he finds a recipe that was a some dish that was mentioned randomly in a movie, and then he goes and tries to make it. Hmm. It's really good. Yeah, some people are throwing some good stuff. So yeah, people in the comments, what are YouTube channels that you're into that are not fishing related, like non fishing stuff that you love on YouTube? My I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of good YouTube channels like Sobe. So many and, good ones, yeah. And, and, and we, I'm probably gonna do a video at some point, like my favorite fishing YouTube channels or favorite. It's a good uh, idea. But I just haven't done that yet. So right. non fishing, I I tend to my my non fishing YouTube videos tend to lean. Um, I, I work in tech, so I, I've subscribed to some channels that are like about cloud technology, like updates and stuff. So I watch some of that, but that's kind of work related, so it's not fun. Um, I really like um, this is a I, I'm going to admit something here, but I used to play a lot of fighting games 
like video game fight, like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, all that kind of stuff. I don't play it so much anymore, but I still watch YouTube channels of guys who are like high level professional Mortal Kombat tournament guys. Like there's guys who literally make a living playing in fighting game tournaments online and stuff. And for some reason, I love those channels. I just like watching people who are really good at video games play at like the highest level for some reason. I don't know why, but that's something I just will mindlessly watch for like 10 minutes. And I don't, then I stop and I'm like, why I've been watching this for 10 minutes, but this guy's really good at this game. I don't so, know why. Sam the cooking guy and that dude can cook. That chat what okay, that chapter scratches the murder mystery itch. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look that up. I like that kind of stuff. That chapter. There's so many good murder mystery podcasts nowadays. I've never thought to look on YouTube for that. What's up, Gabe? Thanks for tuning in. Hope your practice is going good. <laughs> Yeah. I also like music, and for some reason, I always go down these rabbit holes on mu- on YouTube of watching live concerts because there's so many awesome live concerts that are on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like I'll just look up a band I like or a, some band I've heard of, and I'll just like type live, and then I'll watch like a 40 minutes of their live show from 1973 or something like that. I don't know why, but for some reason, live music is interesting to me on YouTube. Well, alert, Kyle, you did not win tonight, but I appreciate <laughs> you being a loyal watcher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. But, Cleus yeah. Demo Ranch. I know a lot of people like Demo Ranch. That's a little too redneck for me, but I know people love it. Um, Mikey Balls. He's he's pretty good. That guy's mm-hmm. a good fisherman. Sometimes I get mad watching really good fishermen on YouTube who like just are amazing and crack them because I'm like, I get a little jealous of like how much time they have to go fish sometimes. I'm just looking through my feed here to see if there's anything else that jumps out that I didn't mention. There's some good ones. Someone said seek one. Hmm. The nature of fishing guy. Someone says I look like Mark Rober. I guess that's a compliment. I don't know. I don't think so, but. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. He's went... I love Roland. Mar- Roland Martin's YouTube channel is fantastic. The what's up with Roland videos. I crack a smile every time he posts one of those. Cause he's always such in a good mood and like, yeah, Roland Martin's YouTube channel is just great. So happy. And the way he explains things is always so good. Looking through my feed and all these food recipes, it makes me want to eat. I know. I'm hungry, too. Seek one for... There's so many hunting channels on YouTube, but hunting is a really tough topic to tackle on YouTube right now because YouTube does not let money or videos be monetized that have hunting content anymore. So the hunting... All the hunting channels are... Like, they have to have sponsors and all this stuff. It's tough out there for hunting YouTube right now. What's jerkbait? The mixed stick? What are you throwing, Gabe, on Table Rock? What's jerkbait? Everyone's favorite rod and reel veil. Ooh, that's a good question. You go first. Uh, I might I actually you, think I'm I have the one. I'm going to give you my favorite casting and my favorite spinning. Okay. That's good, good, good. My favorite bait caster is Dobbins Extreme Champion Extreme DX745, which is a 7 foot 4 mag heavy extra fast for like jigs. Jig, jig rod. Oh, jigs, say, uh, rigs. You like those gears. big you like those big jig hook sets. I've seen your videos. Yeah. Dunk. Yeah. Um, and then my favorite spinning rod is same series Dobbins Extreme uh, 742. So seven foot four medium action. And it's got a pretty so- slow action to it. Um, great right. smaller rod. Swim baits, neds, drop shots. Yeah, that one's that's kind of the one everyone always recommends. Like when people are like, what spinning rod should I get for finesse? That's like the one that always comes up. At least when I see it. Okay, so uh, I got to think here real quick. I'm pretty sure the one I want to say is right here. Let me grab it. Yeah, yeah, the the, the RC Sticks is a good one. You didn't win, Gabe. Spoiler alert. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. This has been awesome. We're like two hours in, so this has been good. Uh, What... Would and wouldn't you try on the 734C? So the ch- I don't know if you're talking about. So the Champ 34C is one of the most popular Dobbins rods out there. It's one of the most versatile rods. I would throw a swim jig on it. I would throw a spinner bait on it. I would throw half ounce lipless crankbaits on it. I would throw chatter baits on it. I would flip jigs. I would flip beavers. I'd throw frogs with braid on a punt in a pinch. I'd throw big spooks, big topwaters, choppos, ploppers. Uh, so I say spinnerbait. It it really does everything okay, but it's probably not the best rod for anything. 
There you go. You gotta have rods like that though. Yeah. That are just kind of Swiss Army knives. So my favorite bait casting rod, if I just had to pick one out of my like if I could only pick one that I use that I love the most is probably the X Pride 72 medium heavy. Just because this rod is crazy vertical. Or I'm sorry, vertical. Crazy <laughs> versatile. It's light. It's just feels awesome in the hand. It's sensitive. You can do so much stuff with this thing. You can like basically jig, swim jig, spinner baits, like anything. It's just like the if I had to like say what is the perfect medium heavy rod. Like, you have a hard time finding one that's better than this. Just, it's just great all around. It's hard as hell to find. Every time people get them, they sell out. Omnia had like three in stock and it, they lasted for like an, like less than an hour. So, the 7.2 Medium Heavy X Pride is one of Shimano's, probably one of the best rods they've ever made. Just love it. Yeah. Still running the cat one more season, Joe. Still got the, the classic. And spinning rod, I think everyone knows this 872S. The NRX 872S. I, I, this is just for my style of fishing. I love being in 10 to 15 foot of water at all times. And uh, being in deeper water, this that little extra length on this 872S um, is great. This is just this is a killer Nico rig rod and a amazing rod for throwing finesse swim baits. I got a little, I got the I got the true bass. Is it what they're called? I don't remember. This is like that smallmouth crush guy who's he always has on. I think they're called true bass. Yep, I've got some true bass. I use yeah, them quite a bit on Pickwick and uh, Gunnersville. Yeah, so this is a little true bass three inch on a Gami head. That's what I'll be throwing this weekend, that's for sure. But what, anyway, uh, 872S. Yeah. On my big casing rods, well, my 745s, I think I got one of them's got an old school Cronark 100D. You got some old Shimanos, and they look awesome. Um, you got some old workhorses. You got some cores. I mean, Dude, all my reels are Shimano or Daiwa. Some are old, some are new. Yeah, those old Shimano's though, man, they just keep going. They're like the, they're like the, they're like the Toyota of <laughs> big casting rails. Can't kill them. Frog rod, I got two for my like river frogging, huge flat stuff like wild rice, leech lake. I throw mm. an extreme seven ninety five, so seven foot nine five power, like a That's big. reach out and touch them, like. Yeah, yeah, we can make those real long casts too. Yeah, and then like yeah. when you do, you get them on the end. And then for my tactical frogging, like skipping boat docks, Ooh, trees, tactical. I like that. I like a seven thirty five. The one I'm currently using as a Sierra, but you can get away with a Fury or a Champ or any of those. Um, I don't do a lot of long range frogging, like in the rice, like at Vermilion. That's not something I encounter too much. So my my frog, my what I don't know, my frog rod this year. I change my frog rod all the time. Every year I try a different frog rod. I'm just weird. Uh, this year I'm running a thing called a TS Poker, which is a big three ounce capable um, Japanese. It's one of Mega Bass's like heavy um, bait rods. So I got TS Poker for most frogging, but for my lighter frogging, which you're calling tactical, like docks and more open water, I like uh, what's called a Mega Bass Perfect Pitch. It's got a, it's a, it's a seven two heavy, but it's got a soft tip. Um, so it can roll casts under docks and stuff like that. And it, so, yeah, perfect pitch is my kind of like open water hmm. frog rod. Daiwa. I'm so on the fence. I'm, I'm, I'm like this close to ordering one of those new zillions, but they're so hard to find those new Daiwa zillions. I, I, I really toted the idea of getting myself an ecstasy 725 and putting that new mm, zillion on. <laughs> do it. Yes. I am the one person who will tell you to absolutely 100% do that. The problem though is you have options with the zillion because the zillion, there's a JDM version and a US version. The JDM version is the better one. It's made in Japan and it has an aluminum gear and it's a little lighter. The U.S. version has a brass gear because us Americans throw heavier baits than they yeah. do, so they give it the the. I would use the dock rod, so I'd get the brass gear. Yeah, so that that's the U.S. one. Both of them are equally hard to find. All the JDM, all the Japanese companies, they're sold out. All the U.S. companies, they're sold out. Finding either of them right now is a pain. In the ass. May or may not have an alert set on the Omni website for that. <laughs> Dude, you and me both, but some shops have there's a couple sneaky shops that have them but the shops that still have them either have them the eight to one or sorry eight to five or the slow the five they actually have they out they came out with the zillions in a slow slow gear like there's like a five which is kind of rare nowadays but um what ratio would you buy for that like are I, you seven seven or an eight i'm not sure one of the two yeah so if you want if you want an eight zillion you can get one of those around town i think like cappers has one but they're they're easier to find but the sevens are just no one's got them they're just sold out everywhere. Go to pond baits. Um, Ooh, I honestly, know. a frog. I like. I was gonna in, say top water. 
Um, and then I, a lot of times I'll just bring a jig because I can swim it and crawl it. When I, like I'm going to bring, you know, be a one rod Todd and go to the bank. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I typically bring like one of my three sounds bass tech jigs. And put like, like a menace scrub or something like that, so I can swim it, I can flip it, I can drag it, I can do anything with it. I was gonna say that uh, swim jig. I just because then you can walk around the whole bank. And you just keep moving, like you know, or like like you said, a swim a jig or a swim jig is probably what I would go with. <laughs> Brandon, I appreciate it again. Uh, next, dude, Wednesday he's night, making it rain. Yeah, like he's just like. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he's like he's hooking you up. My my normal streaming time is Wednesday nights, uh, starting between eight or eight thirty, depending on my schedule and my guest schedule. So that's the normal. Oh. But I always post on my Instagram story. So if you want to look me up, Hella Bass, like I'm always giving alerts there if the stream time changes. And I also post to my YouTube community page. So if there's ever a, a change in schedule, I always post it there. So someone asked, what is the reel on the Baycaster? This is the 2016 Shimano, the super silver one that scratches if you breathe on it. <laughs> this is the this is one of the best reels Shimano's ever made, but it has one of the worst finishes. Like you can't find a used metanium that isn't scratched the hell because like like just lightly brushing it scratches it. It's amazing that our live watchers went in half when we did the drawing for the giveaway. <laughs> hey, they're smart. Good thing we didn't tell them they didn't have to be present to win because uh, they didn't. Largies, oh, man, Minnesota, Wisconsin, I'd be hard pressed to, <laughs> not to beat a dead horse, but I'd probably pick a jig, either a swim jig or a regular jig. <clears throat> and I'd so, be... Brock, I was fishing in Wisconsin last weekend. I threw a jig everywhere and I didn't get a bite. Uh, and then I went to a crank, a red crank, and then boom, they started coming out of the woodworks. So don't don't sleep on a crank right now. In yeah. all the depths. A jerk bait is probably a pretty safe bet. Right. Red crank is what I would I would yeah, jig, red crank, jerk bait. I feel like that would make a pretty good rod and reel review, uh uh ecstasy with a zillion on it. Uh yeah, it would. You, dude, dude, there's almost no I've almost bought an XT ecstasy because there's like no reviews of them on anywhere on YouTube. I'm like, if you put one out there, everyone's gonna find it. Because there's mm -hmm. none. I'm not fishing the BFL. I'm fishing a team tournament on Pool 4 the weekend after, though. Just couldn't make the BFLs work in my schedule this year. Yeah, jerkbait, trap, square bills. I've never, I've never thrown a trap in the spring. I should. I actually have one tied on for this weekend. I threw one of that LV, I threw an LV500 on one of my rods to go smallmouth fish this weekend, and I'm going to throw the damn thing. I'm like, I'm throwing a trap. I'm just going to see what uh, happens. For Floro, it's pretty much all Sunline and Seaguar for me. Yeah, you can't go wrong. I, yeah, you nailed it. I, I, my braid is all actually. I switched most of my braid over to Daiwa J Braid Grand because I didn't like how short casts go on Super Slick V2 because it's a really limp, it's a really limp eight carrier. It's just like so soft. If you really want to make long casts, it's not the greatest line. Um, it's super strong and really abrasion resistant. Like it's one of the strongest ones, but it's just so the I like the J Braid Grand because it's a little stiffer and it the baits go further, especially in spinning rods. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a big Jaiwa JB grand now. And then, yeah, I, I, I basically go between Vizix and FC sniper. Yeah. kind of depends on what I, what I, what I grab first and what I've bought, you know, bulked up on, on sales and stuff. Um, uh, same here, dude. I got, I still am sitting on like five spools of 15 pound Invisix that I got at the Gander 50% off store closings. I bought so much of it. I still have it. And they closed like two years ago. I still have it. I'm like, backed up for a while on that stuff yeah and so i so like all my like jig fishing flipping like stuff where i'm gonna set the hook really hard i use in and sniper right <clears throat> for yeah. my reaction baits i will go to like sunline assassin and seaguar red label is do you have do you find do you feel a difference it's just it's a it's a it's a little bit. Uh, it's not quite as manageable. Like the red, the red label and assassin are both their entry level fluorocarbons. Right. So this less. So like. Oh, you know, is it a cost thing? You feel like it's just yeah. So I'm just saving money. On I don't feel like I need that, that super premium fluorocarbon. But for when I'm like yanking big hook sets on jigs, I want the good stuff. But that makes on a reaction bait where it's more of a lean into them, like I've never had issues breaking it, and like suppleness yeah. of the line is less important when you're throwing a spinner bait than when you're trying to finesse a jig or something like that so. that makes good fiscal sense that's not my strong suit yeah 
If you watched his video today, you know that fiscal responsibility is not a strong suit of his. I put that in my comment. I don't know if anyone actually read the description of my video, but it said, hey, check in and see what bad financial decisions I've made this year. Seagar Tatsu is amazing. I've never tried it. It's awesome. Don't yeah. you probably shouldn't try it because <laughs> it will cost you a fortune. <laughs> well, it's like fifty it's like forty five, fifty dollars a spool. Yeah. But I, that's what I use for my leaders. Is oh, interesting. Because one I, spool, like if you watch the video I did about braid to right, yeah, like yeah. even a forty dollar spool of or fifty dollar spool of fluorocarbon comes out to be like a dollar to dollar fifty per liter. Ooh. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, I mean, but like still you might it's still I mean, you're going to get like a year out of a spool, right? Uh, on braided sail. <laughs> I so go you, through a, I go through a lot of leader line because I spinning rod a lot and I deal with pike a lot. So I actually blow through a lot of eight pound fluorocarbon. Sure, but I'm like saying like leaders, yeah. versus like if you run straight fluoro and you're respooling a couple times a year at forty dollars oh, a shot. I never like, do that. Yeah, but the, you know what I'm saying? Like no, yeah, I get. It. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I do. Do you respool mid year? I almost never do. Because I, the I find Invisics and FC can just they last me a whole season. I, I take no, the line off. I basically fish them until they don't cast well and then respool them. Exactly. That's what I. That's what the people. That's what like pro like pros like people we know that are sponsored. That's what they always say. They just go use the line until you feel it's not working well and then swap it. People people swap like, out. People dump really good line a yeah, lot. There's, I most of my rods I'm still running the the line from last year. It was good enough for the last cast last year. It's good enough for the first cast this year. <laughs> That's sage advice. Yeah, I think people think that they just have to. I mean, this, the, the line industry wants you to change your line multiple times a year. That's great for them. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, 15, 20 years ago when I was fishing club tournaments and I was fishing uh, AN40 mono and things like that, I definitely changed my line a lot more than I do now. <laughs> I creep eBay for the, sometimes you find big spools on eBay that people have used a little bit. So it's not like, like a 3000 yard spool that 200 yards might've been spun off it. And then yep. you can get them for like really cheap because no one really looks on there for useful. Why am I telling people my tips? I shouldn't say this. <laughs> and actually <laughs> but, braid is really good to swap it end to end. Like shadow says, I do that. I back it off. I do that on my flipping rod. My flipping rod this year is my line from last year backwards. <laughs> I do that. Why? Why? Because you have all this great line sitting underneath that never gets stuck. It's, you're flipping. What are you making? You're making twenty yard casts at the most all the time. So that all that line down underneath it is not. It's brand new essentially. So yeah, back. Yeah, going reverse on your reels is very smart with braid. Unfortunately, Hunter, we do. It's a sad, sad existence with our fishing. Yes, but Wisconsin has now got a catch and release season. Every state around us, we can fish year round if we drive across. <laughs> yep, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Wisconsin. Oh, they're all open, just not us. We're also the state that had a you can't sell liquor on Sundays law up until like three years ago. <laughs> and even then, it's technically supposed to be well, no, no, like, and then like in grocery stores and gas stations, you can't buy real beer, it's supposed to be the three two beer, right. So the point is, we're a little slow up here. Yeah, a little conservative <laughs> on that kind of stuff and everything. <clears throat> Nothing. Our, our our laws and things don't change. We're always the last to the party. Put it that way. It sucks. We're never we're never innovative. Which you'd think that's like I mean, everyone's like Minneapolis is so innovative and forward thinking. I'm like, no, we're not. We're always the last one to do anything. We'll be the last people to approve marijuana as well. Hundred <laughs> percent. Hundred percent. We will be the last state in the union to. The Bible Belt will approve marijuana <laughs> across before we will. Uh, hundred. Yeah. We don't have strike counties though, so there is that. Yeah, we got that going for us. Yeah. You can't buy liquor on Sundays in Texas either. Really? Is that true? I. I don't there's know. Is really like county by county. I don't know for sure, but I know like there's a lot of weird liquor laws in Texas in general. Someone says, I crush bluegill colored trap in the spring, so don't sleep on that. Yeah, traps are just not my confidence bait, but they're going to be. I've been com committed to the trap this year. So uh, what? anything new coming up on your channel? Well, I'm hoping to film something this weekend. I got the GoPro all charged up and ready to go. I don't know what I'm going to film yet because I'm going to go hit some of my little smallie haunts up in Hayward, and I don't know what I'm going to do. It's like I haven't been on these lakes. It's, you know when you go to your favorite lakes for the first time? You just literally have no freaking clue what's going on. So I'm going to scan around. I'd like to – now that I have active target on my boat, I want to go throw a jerkbait just to play with the active target so I can see if I can call up fish and see them eat it, you know, like – 
what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. So I think I think I'll probably be cranking and jerk baiting just to play around with the active target. And then if I can find some, then I'll slow down and throw I don't know net, net rig or something. Who knows? But I'm gonna try and catch some smallies. You're gonna try to make on the water content. That's your your sweet spot. I just don't like editing. <laughs> Uh, I only have one GoPro, so that doesn't yeah. help. Uh, so Monday I'll have an on the water video from Pool Four from this past weekend. I know I'm excited to see that because you had some you had some decent posts from your Instagram. So it, I need to get the camera mount on my windscreen, which I don't actually have a windscreen on my boat right now. I, I sent it in to get replaced, um, but like I need to get the power cable so I can just mount it on a like a mount. And have it get that forward view of the, you sitting you on the front a cigarette of the boat. lighter. Yes, I have two of them. I didn't yeah. install them. The guy who had my boat installed them. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the way to go. Run direct power. Although if yeah. it's windy, the audio is terrible on the that. Right. It's always windy. Whenever you want to film, <laughs> it's inevitable. Whenever you got time, and you want to go fishing, you want to film something. It's almost. Are you an FG nice. knot guy? Nope. Well. Yes, I, I do the FG knot on a couple setups, like my top water setup. I do an FG just because it's I'm never changing the leader. It basically stays there all year. Um, but for spinning rods, nope, I don't I don't have the patience for it. And RP, been, Alberto, what are you? I am Royal Polaris all the time, and I never break. So, but I also run light stuff, and I run good rods that have good bend in the rod. So I'm very rarely like pushing. You know, my rods make up for a lot of bad knots, probably. Because <laughs> actually are certain braids not as good. As oh. Actually. Actually, that's so I, that's I don't, that I don't I have not currently worked on the FG knot, so I don't know. That that question's above my pay grade as far as a fisherman. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I mean FG knot is something salt guys tie with like 80 pound line and then it goes all the way down to panfish setups. So it's like I don't I don't know if the line really matters. I can't get um, off my can't get my computer to recommend. Yeah, I just I just take the SD cards out, Sycamore, yeah. and then I plug them inside of my computer. I don't typically plug my GoPro into my computer. So be no, nice it's suggestion. it's going to be faster too for reading the data if you just yeah. pop it into an SD just reader. And if SD you have a card out, insert that into your laptop. And if you don't have an SD reader on your card, just get a USB extended yeah, one. external one. They're like stupid cheap on Amazon. Yeah, they're just dime a dozen. Good phone mount for the. Mm, oh, I don't. Get I mean, play with fire, <laughs> mounting your phone. <laughs> I don't. But, yeah, I've never used my phone for shooting content. I mean, you can get phone. something like this, um, but I would get a tripod you can mount. Uh, Yolo Tech did have one, but yeah, I, I, I use my a, phone a lot for like B-roll and taking little vlog type stuff. But I use the GoPro for actually filming because I don't want my phone just sitting out the there. <laughs> I also, yeah, you don't want to hit it with a bait. You don't want it to fall yeah. into the water. I had an oh shit moment on the river this year because I we, I got wading on the river and I, I have a pouch on my waders and um, I was laying my phone in a pouch and I bent over or leaned over. I don't know. I don't remember what I was doing. And then the phone went bloop into the river. And luckily the water was really clear that day. Usually it's kind of tannic and sooty but it was gin clear and I saw exactly where it went. I just shoved my whole arm down into the freezing water and then I was wet the rest of the day. I was like, yeah, that was not my best moment. So this phone, three years ago. Oh, you're, you're a Samsung guy too. Eight plus. So this is older. Um, I took this up to the river in November. I got it was This phone was about a week old at the time. Yeah. I was fishing, and I probably took a selfie with a fish or something or something for the gram, right? Put it in my pouch. I thought I did anyways. Mm. Didn't realize it. I got back to the truck and I couldn't find my phone. Uh oh. I went back out in the water, looked around, couldn't find it, traced my steps all around, couldn't find it. Gave up. Still had my old six. Activated yeah. that. Oh, so you were just you just gave it away. You were just, or you just gave I was up like, on I it. I couldn't find it. I had to be somewhere. I had to go somewhere. I was just like, you I just don't said, know. Why screw it. Is. Yeah. Two and a half days later, some kids from Midgey State. Found my phone, still nope. working in the water. No Got way. Me, and I'm still using that phone today. That should be a Samsung ad. <laughs> that did you have to like rice it or did it just work? Oh, uh, did they? They must have gone to work to contact you, right? How did they find who, uh, who you were? So it doesn't like there. So there was like 
seven percent charge left on it at that time when they found it so okay. two days sitting in cold water like, but you didn't uh, have a pin or a lock screen on anything no it? but i guess you can like certain things you can do or you could see my notifications okay because i was gonna say my phone was. yeah huh because so like I... mine like you can still like pull it down yeah you see, get you see your notifications yeah see some things or something they, they there was enough they could unlock to see identify who it was and then they searched me up on like Instagram and Facebook and sent me messages. And did they mail it to you or what? I met them somewhere. Oh wow! Wow, I I, that's a good I sent story. The Bass Tech jigs as a thank you. I think that's a really crazy story. I I think because I my phone's pretty locked down. I, I don't think if anyone found my phone, they'd even be able to like figure out who owns it. I have my phone number on my screen. That's a good idea. It's pretty smart. Why wouldn't? That's what a smart person would do. I'm not one Alberto, of that's, I mean, it works for Justin Lucas, the Alberto knot. I use it quite a bit. Yeah, Alberto's like, yeah, legit. Everybody. Alberto, RP, very good options. Yeah, I like RP just because I'm so used to tying it. I can do it one-handed in a windstorm. Not having a victory in the 2020 lineup is a sin. For who? For me or for Rich? I have, I have a couple victory rods. But they, I, they don't suck. I was expecting them to suck, and the victory rods don't suck. So St. Croix, good job, because I was not expecting much, but they're good. Kevin wants to know your thoughts on a victory. Uh, I've only I, I took it with me largemouth fishing last weekend, and I threw a football jig on it, and I got zero action. Although it felt good, um, I I didn't get a single bite on it, so I don't. I mean, it's St. Croix calls that rod. It's a seven three. They call it a heavy. They don't call it an extra heavy. I think it's just a heavy. But they call it a full contact finesse. And it's rated up to seven eighths of an ounce. That's weird. Did any of that make any sense? No. No. It's seven eighths of an ounce. Not, not a full ounce. But they call it, they literally says on the butt, full contact finesse. <laughs> Who, what is people, whoever, somebody's smoking something at St. Croix when they, they're trying to do the mega bass thing where they name their rods a, like a, a technique or a, or kind of come up with a cool name, but they, they fail at it. They're really bad at it. They're Wisconsin at it. It's a good point. If you don't have your phone and they call it and that doesn't. So only if you reactivate a new phone, will calling that number help. I'll put my wife's number. There you go. Yeah. I'll put my wife's number on the, on the screensaver. Just call her. Tell her her dumbass husband lost his phone. That model is whack model. I won't say it's a whack model. They're trying so so St. Croix is like dropping a whole bunch of new models in the victory that they don't normally do. And a lot of them are copycat models of stuff G Loomis has been doing forever. So St. Croix is doing copycat models of G Loomis stuff. And they're a little lighter, they're not as powerful, but they're really close. They're like the Shasta versus Coke, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're they're trying to copy it just enough. But it's also a two hundred dollar price point. So can't complain you want like that 872s and the nrx they made a victory that's almost identical to it but it's 200 bucks versus 600 bucks it's the same length same action almost the exact same bend um so st is doing a smart thing and copying loomis which is what most people should do because loomis is like one of the best nice i feel like we've kind of hit a point where yeah we're, we're at two hours in dude we're two and a half hours in Ooh. This is, uh, I feel bad for our audience. And we still got 45 just... people like diehards hanging in. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to you guys. Uh, yeah, no shit. It's awesome. Thanks. Well, I appreciate it, Brian. Yeah, uh, this is fun, dude. I love tackle unboxings. We got to do it for like an hour. Dustin and Bo, I saw your notes. They're both going to DM me their addresses on Instagram. So, I'll get yep. that. Um, I'll thank you, everybody. And then, uh, make sure. Caroline, you get a hold of me if you didn't already. So uh, Shasta, we'll get those prizes here. out uh, next week. Bass Brawl. If you don't want to watch this whole replay, search Hella Bass on a podcast. That's always an option. I appreciate all you guys for hanging out tonight. This was a fun stream, I think, for everybody. Yeah, we'll definitely do some more Tackle Talk stuff. Like this will be kind of something we rotate in every now and then. This ain't going to be an every week thing, but you know, maybe every other month we'll probably do some like heavy tackle unboxing. I mean, I've done this stuff with like Bateman and Epic Eric in the past, mm -hmm. so we'll mix this in from time to time and get real nerdy on tackle. I think we should do this exact thing again at Christmas and even do it bigger. 
Or you think about doing this box swap again, but we set the limit even a little higher and we go nut and do like a Christmas thing, like a Christmas giveaway. I think that'd be fun. Because what else we like multiple boxes so more people could win? That'd be nice. That, I'd be fine with that too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, let's take it up one more level. Like, right. this worked. Like we got a lot of people. Or $25 boxes or something like that. Yeah, right? exactly. We just, we'd blow it out bigger and just do more. I think people would like that. I don't think we're quite there. Not quite yet. Maybe if my channel gets to like 10,000 subs. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Between now and Christmas. Like, I think, I think it'd be thematically, it would be fun to do at Christmas. Like, hey, it's a big Christmas giveaway. You're tackle, you know, you're going to get Christmas presents from us. And we could like do this whole mystery thing again. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. So it'd be, it's, it, it, it right, we'll drag this on. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Check out Punch Fishing if you like nerdy gear, tackle stuff. Appreciate it. If you're here, you already know who I am. Watch some of my other catalog. And I appreciate it, guys. As always, here to help you guys catch more bass and suck less.